It's time for Twig. This week in Google coming up, Google's working on a debit card to rival Apple's card. Palantir will track COVID-19 for the Health and Human Services. And is it okay for Tubi to use credit bureau information to feed you ads? It's all coming up next on Twig. This Week in Google comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Stay in control when it comes to your company's access points and authentication. LastPass makes enterprise-level security simple for your remote workforce. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. twit. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 556, recorded Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020. Internet pretzels. This episode of This Week in Google is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter knows we have to work to stay strong, connected, and focused. To find the right people for the right jobs, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash work together. It's time for Twig This Week in Google, the show we cover the latest news from the Googleverse with Mr. Jeff Jarvis, uh, Craig Tau Knight, Craig <laughs> <laughs> Professor <laughs> of Journalism at the uh, Professor of Journalism at the Craig Newmark Graduate Somewhere School of New Journalism Jersey. and yeah. the Tau Knight Center for Editor Entrepreneurial Journalism at the City University of New York. I got and I got him in there. Wayward, white-haired people. Uh huh. And thank you, Craig Newmark, for giving them a lot of money so Jeff could do his job. Is that a chair? Do you have a chair? That I'm sitting on, yes. <laughs> oh, no, I mean. No, he's the Craig Newmark chair of something. Oh, do I have a chair? Oh, no, the I Tau have the Leonard chair. Tau chair he is the for Leonard, journalism innovation. He's sitting in the chair that Leonard Tau in, in, endowed at the Craig Newmark endowed. Newmark Graduate School. Graduate at the, School in the Tau Knight Center, which I direct at the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. He's a big shot. He's a big shot, former TV Guide critic as well, uh, also, which we say just to cut him down a few pegs so he doesn't get a big head. Also, Stacey Higginbotham. Big pink head. <laughs> who is uh, our IoT guru, our chip maven. She uh, is at StaceyOnIoT.com and does the IoT podcast with Kevin Toffel. You can find that there. Hello, Stacey. Is there a feminine form of guru? Was there? That's why I said maven. Well, maven, guru, I accept guru. I don't no, know you should. I was just curious whether they used to be not gendered. A feminine form. Like a guruette? That's really No, good. please do not guru call me any et. <laughs> guruette would be terrible. <laughs> that would be a guruette. Although gurus tend to abuse their followers and True. can be problematic. True. So maybe I don't yes. want to be True. a guru. You could no, be a shaman. shaman. I don't think I shaman. smoke enough or drink any weird teas. Okay. And I'm Definitely not into sweat lodges. If you don't drink but, but people on the show, you didn't see this before the show. Her, she snacks weird. That's not weird. She's a little chicken. Weird. That's not weird. She's a it's chicken. just it's healthy protein and she, cubes it's, of chicken for a snack. A snack, a snack is an excuse to have something that you shouldn't have. I had oh. two peanut butter oh. cookies. Oh, that's a snack. Oh. Lisa That's ordered so internet, think of it. internet pretzels today. We got our internet pretzels. <laughs> what, are, what are internet, internet pretzels? <laughs> I don't know. But I've never bought internet pretzels on the internet, but apparently that's what we do these days. That's our new did thing. You, in, when I lived in South Jersey, did you know that besides being able to get milk delivered, you could get pretzels and chips delivered? Well, there's a story Big behind that. Charlie's chips, right? We used to have a milkman, too, in Providence. We still do. My mom has one in Cranston. But really? what, what happened, it was... Oh, we have one on Bainbridge. Yeah, I bet you do. Oh. But what happened is it got less um, and less the, the lucrative milk and man. merely to bring milk, cheese, and butter. So they started adding products. And I remember in Rhode Island, they started adding milk shampoo <laughs> and milk <laughs> conditioner. <laughs> and, you know, you just got to kind of... If you're going to deliver stuff, you got to expand. Gotta be true to the brand, yeah. Yeah. So, I do... I, this I, reminds me of the... Uh, the Schitt's Creek episode where he's like, he's got body milk in his store and everyone keeps coming up to him and they're like, can you drink this? And he's like, it's body milk. It <laughs> says so on the thing. So now I'm like, Can oh, you drink it? It's, it's, yeah. Every, it does not answer like, the question. Can you drink? You can't drink No, it. the answer is no, because it's body milk, not drinking not milk. Not throat milk. 
Okay. Throat milk. <laughs> Throat milk. Okay. All right. Okay. Episode today, uh, 556. Uh, in our never ending quest to find stories to talk about. Um, because, as you know, times have changed and there's not a lot of news, but there is some Google news. Google is, according to The Verge, working on its own debit card. Now, the weird thing is Google used to have a credit card. I remember getting right, and they it. stopped it. Yes, stopped. I did too. Yeah. So Google, this is, this is short-sighted from Chaim Gartenberg. They're coming back, although it, is, it wasn't a debit card, and I guess the Apple card which is Goldman Sachs Bank. Uh, I guess Google, Fancy. Which is weird. Fancy. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Don't you have to have a certain credit rating to get it? No. Well, And wasn't there a big kerfuffle around okay. men getting it yes. and women not getting it? A couple of people, okay. Steve Wozniak and David Heinermeyer Hansen, who created Ruby on Rails, two well-known geek icons, both said, I got a much better credit limit than my wife. Yeah. Who has my same finances because she's my wife. But anyway, Apple says, yeah, mm -hmm. well, we talked about this. The ways yeah. of the credit score are <laughs> varied and mysterious. But Apple said, okay, we'll fix that. Uh, you know, Lisa got a better credit limit than I did on mine. So well, somehow that's not okay, surprising. So it's probably just based on your credit. I mean, like ways. I have better credit. It's personal credit, I would guess. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're Steve Wozniak, she's not buying the sixteen hundred dollar thermomix. Exactly. Exactly. Google wants to do a Google branded smart debit card. Uh, you know, actually, the Apple Card, which I've had for a while, works quite well. Uh, you get cash back. The nice thing is it's tied to the watch, which is kind of something. I guess Google Google still has Android Wear, but does anybody wear Android no. Wear? But the idea of it. But they now, might close Fitbit eventually. Yeah, and maybe the new Fitbit does have maybe. Pay. In it. Yeah. Cause huh? So nowadays, not touching money or credit cards, but yeah. contactless yeah. payment at the grocery store, if you have to go, is to be uh, embraced. So maybe that's maybe this is a COVID thing. I don't know. The uh, guy came today to do our maintenance. I, I think on the, it's a the, data thing. I think it's, so, yeah, I think it's a data thing. You're right. So you can get a lot of information. And like Facebook even has deals with credit card companies to, to say, hey, um, what are people buying? And they, yeah. so I think Google's like, oh, I would love to know. And about tying that back possibly into advertisements, you could actually say, hey, this person saw this ad here. They We're already do that. There. They already do that. Well, yeah. Yeah. But the, so they have Google Pay, just like Apple Pay and Samsung Pay. Uh, but the, normally those work by you attach your existing credit cards to it. So what's different about Apple's credit card is you can use that as your primary payment. Apple's is an actual charge card. It's a credit card. You, you rack up a bill, you pay it in the month. The Google supposedly, according to The Verge, is a debit card. They're going to partner with Citi, uh, Stanford Federal Credit Union. It's a Visa but most debit cards are either a Visa or a MasterCard. Um, but it, but it would take it right out of your bank account as opposed to adding up the charges till the end of the month. Uh, it will do virtual card numbers. That's one of the real selling points on the Apple credit card is that the merchant doesn't get any information about you. Uh, they don't even get your credit card number. They get a token, and they don't get your address, your real name, or any of that stuff. And, of course, merchants hate that. Google apparently wants to do the same thing. But you know who gets the information? Apple and Google, in Google's case. So it's not like they're giving up any information. Customers will be able to use the Google Pay app to lock their card in the event of theft or loss, according to The Verge, or lock the account entirely. Google's app reportedly, and there is a picture of the app, so this leak is pretty well sourced, will reportedly allow customers to easily track purchases using Google Maps and its database of retailers. I would would you get a Google debit card or not? I don't like debit cards. Why not? Because I don't like having a PIN number. <laughs> right. <laughs> it is the stupidest reason. Right. Some people I don't like it because cards in full. So the, the rules. I'm like, eh. It's just that's like a debit card then, right? The rules uh, uh, protecting you. I seem to remember with debit cards are not as strict as with credit cards, right? So in theory, right. you can get. Uh, financially hurt more by a debit card. 
Although most banks voluntarily limit the your liability with a debit card, I think. I don't know. I don't mind a debit card. In fact, I kind of like it because I know it's going to come right out of my bank account and I'm not going to have to. But I do. I pay off my credit cards, too. So, yeah. The Apple card I do use. I like it. Partly because it changes color <laughs> depending on what you buy. Oh, my goodness. Talk about gaming, gamifying <laughs> something. When you buy something with your Apple card, if it's a grocery store, it's brown. If it's electronics, it's blue. It's you, so you get this nice rainbow. Didn't you know what you just bought? <laughs> It's just a gaming thing, gamify thing. That's all. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Let me see if I can open my wallet and show you what color. What color is your Apple card? That could be a novel. Um, Wait, oh, so yeah. it, it changes so color is, like mine is mine looks like it's slightly stained. Can you show my uh, over the shoulder shot, Jeff? No, you don't want to. Is your number on there? No, no, of course not. It's an Apple card. So you see, it oh, looks right. like a little halo. But if I were to buy something at Apple, there'd be another color in there. And, and then when you pay it off, it gets white again. <laughs> That's <laughs> utterly useless. <laughs> no, it's not. You know what? It makes me want to buy stuff from different places so I can get prettier. <sighs> and it may, and he's telling us about it and other people are like, That's fine. I'm totally going to go get an Apple card. <laughs> it's it. It's good. And you get 1%, 2%, or 3% back, depending on where you buy it. Although I think Apple is getting more generous with the cash back during COVID. I think they're they're giving Do you, more. Is it at the um, Apple store? Yes, you get or most if you back? buy it from Apple, yes. So oh. since the stuff I buy from Apple tends to be high-ticket items, because Apple doesn't sell no cheap stuff, um, you get some, you know, you get 3% off your Apple stuff. I'm pretty sure I got a case there for under forty dollars once. <laughs> you get three percent off a thing that has a markup of about eighty percent. Yeah, exactly. Good, good well, work. That's, well, yeah. you know, why do you think they do that? Hey, do you have some? Are you a socialist? Apple's making some oh, dough. Ever, ever more, ever more. Yes. Yeah. Nowadays, we're all maybe tending in a little that direction. Uh, Google says it's now displaying information for over 2,000 COVID-19 testing centers across 43 states. Not that you can go, but... Yeah, I re you know, I saw the on the press conference, the president was sh showing a map of Maryland and how there was all these testing centers and saying, I don't know why the governor had to buy tests from South Korea. Look at all these testing centers. <laughs> Maybe was, uh, the cruelest part. Well, not that there's many cruel things, especially if you're if you're African American or Latino or disabled in this country. But um, um, the testing world alone, the cruelest thing is making people who are sick stay overnight in their cars so they can get tested for disease. Is the it's line that long? You have to sleep in your car to get get in the. A lot of places, places it has it been. Is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you especially see, in hard hit areas. See, in a sensible world, you'd call your doctor. And the doctor would say, oh, those symptoms, uh, you need to come in right away and we'll test you. That's uh, not how Boston it works. has an app. So in Boston, there's an app. You go on, you put your, your, your symptoms in, and you can get an appointment. That makes sense. Yeah, you Massachusetts should, shouldn't doing, have to wait Massachusetts in line. is also hiring uh, contact tracers. So they're ahead in a lot of things. Verily, Google's sister company is offering free tests to people in parts of California, New Jersey, and New York, and Pennsylvania, but you have to take an on, do an online screening, you know, a symptom screening. We are not close to the, although in some areas, I guess you can get a test, anybody can get a test, but we're not, most of the case, most of the time right now, you get tested if you have symptoms, right? You know what I got? Well, which, is, which is illogical in and of itself, because what you're going to have to do to open up again Eventually, yes. is you're going to have to trust, trust those prices you don't know have the disease. That's right, because of the asymptomatic yeah. Component. Well, A, A and pre-symptomatic, both. Yeah. My, my doctors in my, in my Twitter list um, are very careful to, to distinguish between the two. Asymptomatic means you go through the whole disease with no symptoms at all. Yeah, and there's much debate as to how, how prevalent Ooh. that is, if at all. Right. Uh, pre-symptomatic is that you're contagious two or three days before you start showing symptoms. Right. Oh, it could be up to a week, right? And that, mm -hmm. you know what, that's not unusual. That's, there are a number of illnesses that that's the case. That's not an unusual thing. It's but a pretty long incubation period. It causes where you're problems shedding the virus. because you you're you you're communicative. You but you don't know you are, and you're walking around and all that. That's why we are all staying home, right? Communicable. Yes. You bet your bippy.
That's why we're all staying home. I'm so tired of staying home. Are you? Where would you yes. go? Because you work at home, right? Where, right. What, what, well, I'd like I, you know, at least twice a week, I would go work with a friend at a coffee shop. Oh, that's nice. Um, oh, just that's you know, for nice. an hour or two. Oh, that's so forget sad. it. It's over. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. life has changed. Actually, do you, do you think? When will do we? You have. When will we ever be able to do that? I look at now and watch vaccine. Movies. If if we get a vaccine, if we Not do, until then. I watch. If we do, and it's an if. It is an if. We don't have vaccines for HIV or colds or a lot of things. I watch uh, movies and I see people doing normal uh, what we used to do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Walking down I the street and I look at it. Hey guys, separate. You could get. It's so how, funny how quickly that gets in your mind, isn't it? It is. Our dean I'm is figuring out it. how to do um, social distancing at the school. Right. Right. What if, if some people start coming back at some point? What and, are they going to do? It's so hard to imagine. They're about to reopen Las Vegas. Have you Vegas. seen the six foot office? The six foot office. No. no. What's that? It is by is it Gensler, I think. Hold on. Here it is. Gensler. I've got it. I'll, I'll put it up. You found it? Yep. Uh, it's an architectural firm. But what Cushman they did. Cushman Wakefield. Oh, Cushman and Wakefield. Sorry. That's a, yes. that's a developer. Yeah, developer. So yeah. it consists of a six foot quick scan. Six so they have more. a video. Oh, okay. Here, let's oh, that's the video. Watch the video to like learn more going. about, is this going to be our future office workspace? Hello. Well, Welcome some, some like parts billions. of it are. It does look like billions, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it's yeah. a fancy office. Um, I have a lot of questions about this intro segment. Oh, looks just like billions. With the ambition to get the world safer and sooner back at work. So you enter, you do a little purification, you get a little Purell shot, just like a cruise <laughs> ship. You walk down a complete, oh, look, did you see their lines? On the floor, yeah, six hours to get one on. person on an elevator. Okay, nobody well, can go it, in with you. Yes. Okay. Is at the center of what's next. So you have to step on that circle. There's a circle in the elevator. Stick to the rules. Follow the signs. Welcome to our new <laughs> fascist state. Right? <laughs> one way only. So, Take your piece of paper, bring it to your workplace... Oh, my. Do you have to... Oh what is my. the piece of... Oh, the piece of paper goes under your uh, the computer. The piece of paper is... Yeah, it's your hot desking kind of thing. So that's... So, and this is really interesting, oh the carpet. You'll see it in the, in Wait the a minute. video in a second. Walk the off... Wait a minute. Do you see one of our new you rules? You only walk one direction. You can yeah. only walk clockwise. <laughs> what does it even look like to walk... Oh, that's so you don't... Oh, I get Those it. two women were a lot closer than six feet. Yeah, but they're not facing well, each other. Oh, they're but they have a place. They no, they're far apart. They're far apart. They're six feet apart. And then these these circles in the video I'm underneath. I'm six feet it's tall. Carpet. That's not six feet. I know six feet. But there was That's a plastic barrier too between them. Well, yeah, 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 like air doesn't go over it. Hi there. Enter meeting rooms as indicated. This is such a dystopian future. This oh, is out of a Cushman and Wakefield Nether <laughs> Netherlands. So the Netherlands, they don't mind. Okay, what's so the you point put your, of the what's the point of the piece of paper? I don't get it. To, to isolate um, you from their desk. Yeah, so you don't put your stuff on the uh, desk. This is so terrifying. You this is terrifying. So your keyboard and, and it goes goes schmitzing around all the time. Why do yeah, they have couches? Well, There's no point in having a couch. One person could sit on it. <laughs> <laughs> but no. yeah, so there's there's wow. there's the office of the future. And I would add to that, if you want to get really crazy, what's going to happen is you're going to have cameras places. Yeah. You might even have badges like Estimote. I don't know if you saw, they have Bluetooth beacon badges now that for office, uh, for industrial workers, but you could put it on an office. You wear this on your lanyard or as a, a thing around your neck and um, it'll beep whenever another person, another beacon gets within six feet of you. So basically someone, everyone has these. And so as you're walking around, if people get within your space bubble, you'll hear beep, 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 beep. And theirs will go beep, 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 beep. And you'll be Jesus. all like, ah, get away. So my question, is, I have a couple of questions. First of all, we have been surprisingly compliant, right? Uh, I, I would have thought, especially in our individualistic United States of America, there would be more people saying, no, I ain't going to do that. But people have been, you walk down the streets of Petaluma. Yeah, the, the nuts are very small in number and small getting groups. way too much coverage. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but that's there's nothing else to talk about. TV has to do something. So uh, we're pretty compliant. And, and I think that we might even do this. The problem is I think it gets in your head, and pretty soon 
you you become a germaphobe. Like you don't like if 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 then the all clear sounds. You say, but I'm still going to go clockwise in my office and put a piece of paper down because it's safe. It's healthy. I think I'm so I don't think th here's the thing. Even though we've been compliant, I feel like people are going to go, no, I'm just going to get it. And if my if old people die, well, it's time. Do you think people are just going to rebel and say, screw it? You can't. This is too much. Only if you're in Las Vegas. That's about and I mentioned that's about to happen in Las Vegas. They want to yeah. I think May 1st they want to reopen. What, do you only walk counterclockwise in the casino? Gamblers will love that. They're already compulsive. Gamblers will go, sure. If it improves my chances of winning, I'll do anything. What if What if you're one of those people who feel that, you know, you've got to walk counterclockwise in order yeah, to win? That's yeah. going to be really upsetting. There's, there are going to be problems. I yeah. So I think we will see some change. I do think, I mean, I've been thinking about what happens if we don't get a vaccine and people don't have immunity for very long with this, if at all, because we still don't actually know that. Um, mm -hmm. That's the worst, by the way, worst case scenario. That is uh, the worst case we scenario. Don't, we can't prevent it and we don't get a treatment. It looks like we may have some treatments. That's good news. Not chloroquine, but we may have some treatments. That might be some good news. Uh, maybe even the treatments involving plasma from people who've already survived it and have antibodies. There may be treatments. But let's say, worst case scenario, no treatments, no vaccine. This is the new normal. So then I think what will happen is most white collar work that can go remote will go remote. And I think you'll see if children are less affected you'll probably see schools open up with more social distancing. And we saw, so, I'm what, really curious what about to see teachers? what happens in Denmark. It's, teachers it's will have to... the flies. Well, well there'll be no teachers. I, I worry that Online. they will not be able to touch the children. Online. Honestly, I was surprised. On my kid's been going to high school online, entirely online. He's a senior. But your kid's in high school and my kid's in middle school. But at fifth grade, you can't stick a 10-year-old... Maybe a ten-year-old girl, but probably not. You, Are they I doing mean, it now? Somewhat, but they're now? not really. Mine is. 13, oh, she's in middle school. She's doing right. a great. Yeah. yeah. But like, I mean, a few years ago, no. Way. And she's super conscientious. They just don't have the. Uh, they don't have the attention span. Parents don't have, and you know, not to mention the fact that we don't have broadband everywhere, which is another issue. Um. So yeah, I think. I think testing, I think good contact tracing, if we can develop something that is a more immediate test, you might, you know, checking for fevers constantly, Carson's, maybe uh, every day. Carson's wife, Kimmy, teaches kindergarten, and he yeah. says they are not learning uh, as much as they should be. I think it's really a, well, it's a lot. There's going to be a generation with a lost year of schooling or more. And we just got to yeah. deal with that. We got to say that you went through a lot, and that's what it is. I just and put up a I think uh, kids terrible are resilient. for all the seniors the graduating thing. without walking. Um, you know, uh, Paul Thorat's daughter yeah. graduated from high school. But you're right. It's uh, what you know. People suffered in World War One, World War Two. Uh, you know, and then the whole generation had stories to tell for decades. I, I just put up an MIT um, technology review piece on ma machine learning could check if you're social distancing properly at work. I just, yes, I feel yes, like there's yes. also like, and you'll have a big klaxon that goes, rawr, rawr, get apart, get apart. Well, but, it'll also be cameras because, and you'll have a little, in this, you have little green squares and red squares. Red square is bad. Yeah. Or maybe, I mean, yeah. I think that it's possible I, to design all of this and sensible and, and I don't think it'll happen because it's too dystopian. And I think at some point people are just going to say, oh, the heck with it. I'm I going think it will happen movies. in grocery stores and retail settings for sure. So we already at our grocery stores, you can only walk certain ways. There's one way aisles, right? Oh, that's good. Uh, and the theory being if you cross, you might breathe on each other. So this way you're at least breathing down somebody's neck right. instead of breathing in their face. I'm going to have to get a neck mask now. Uh, yes. You could. I think we'll see. And what happens kind of to the like economy if this becomes two years of the new normal or more? What happens to the economy? I don't think we'll grow oh, for a while unless we grow. want to invest we'll in the something. And what about all the people who are unemployed? We're going to have to have universal basic income. Oh, yeah, there's major shifts I, of, of wealth. 
Yeah, I think there's, I mean, we have enough with taxation. We could, we have a lot of levers that currently we're not pulling. Um, but I also think this is a good opportunity for, I mean, think about the things we are suddenly like, oh crap, we need to do this. Think about revamping healthcare and what that might look like. Think about mm -hmm. boosting broadband and investing in that. Those are going to be jobs. Um, think about dealing with climate change and electrification. We actually could invest in those areas and build a better long-term everything um, and create jobs for people. Well, we've built an entire economy essentially based on service. Yeah. That's really yeah. the U.S. economy. You know, it's interesting because I've already thought about this for TWIT, and we seem to be handling work at home fine. I think we can continue indefinitely doing what we're doing. It's not comfortable or easy. <laughs> you know, normally on Wednesday, you've been here for that, Jeff. I think Stacy has right. too. We have lunch in the conference room. We get food, and then oh, and yeah. every, it's very social. Everybody loves it. So they tr they did it today via Zoom. I don't know uh, how it went. I missed it, but I don't. I don't. Well, I, don't. I know what Karsten had. I know what Karsten had. What chicken? I said bitterly. What queso? Yeah, Karsten can't. You no. Know. So do you? Oh, he said it to me. I said it to you. Hold on. What? I don't know. I was like, I don't, we don't know. <laughs> I thought. I oh, thought he I said thought, he had Taco he was... Bell. Did you get? Yeah, did you get Bell. one of the drinks from the cantina? <laughs> uh, Karsten, Karsten sent me a picture of him eating Taco Bell because oh, that's, that's how funny. cool that's Karsten funny. is. Theodore <laughs> Karsten. Uh, I yeah. Patrick um, had mini saw... ravioli out of a can. Patrick, I guess so. Nobody, nobody, I, nobody I've worked from home yeah. for companies for, I've worked for three different companies. So the Daily Deal in New York, Time Inc. and GigaOM. And things like Slack, actually remote work is, you can still have social and, and create bonds of friendship or whatever virtually. And I mean, yes, I also saw those people two, maybe three times a year for events. But even if I hadn't, I really got a chance to get to know those people over the, you know, social channels. And that was part of the culture. Like I noticed when I got to Fortune, it was really weird to, to establish myself as a virtual person there because they had already established a culture of physically present in the New mostly, York office. They were mostly in the office at Fortune. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I attended our editorial meetings, you know, every day in via conference call. And, it, you know, but I, I think it can be done. And I think people can. I mean, I'm still really good friends with all of my giga -ohm colleagues. Yeah, and right. again, I didn't see them. I've only met you we just once had in these person, awesome Stacey. Yeah, that's and, a good point. Right here, right you, here. You've learned to hate yeah. me without ever being in the same place as me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to physically hit you at least once a week. I mean, what? There you go. What more could you ask for? <laughs> so, actually, when I met you in person, Leo, I I thought you were a lot nicer than you are on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I have different duties on the show. I know. Uh, I was like, like oh, Leo is a delightful human being my, who isn't trying to poke my yeah, poke me my, all the time, being like, my Stacey. duty is to make the show interesting, and I don't right. care about your feelings. <laughs> 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 it's funny because, yeah, in in person, I am not a confrontational person at all. Um, I just want everybody like to Howard, like it's me. It's like Howard Stern, exactly like Howard Stern. It's funny because when I started in broadcasting, um, I was in fact somebody called me. He said, "You're Mr. Smiley, Smiley." Knock, knock it off. I wanted to be uh, liked. I wanted to be nice. I wanted to be myself. And I, I quickly learned, well, not quickly, it took me about 15 years, but 15 years into my career, my failed career, I learned that the best way to be is like, I don't give a damn. And screw you. <laughs> like, yeah, Howard Stern's probably a nice guy in right, person. Right. Oh, yeah. But he's kind of screw you in the, in, in, on the air because it's much more right. interesting. Yeah. Nobody, nobody wants ingratiating Ingratiating is all. That's the funny thing about broadcast is that every time I did a, a tryout for a broadcast gig, you know, TV critic on the air, um, you gotta you gotta get the smile in your voice. Uh, yeah, right. You know, that they were wrong because I used to do that. I can smile in my voice. You can tell even if you're listening that I'm smiling right now, can't you? <laughs> even if you're not looking, you know. Yeah, and I want to slap you. Yeah, and it's yes. awful. 
And Stacy wants to punch you. It's awful. So you have so the, the smiling isn't a thing. My, I yeah. did not. Jeff, yeah. you just come off as angry. Yeah, angry's not good either. What you really want to be? You got a be, problem with that? You, what you really want to be is insouciant. Like you like me, don't like me, I don't care. I am who I am. That's what you really want to be. I'm too cool for school. Yeah, but in, actually, angry is not you bad. Use words like insouciant, you ain't getting on TV. <laughs> well, that's actually true. That NBC's. True. Uh, one word review of me when I was supposed to be their chief correspondent on the site was Leo. Ich. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, David Borman told me that. David Borman, who then later later went on to become uh, the Washington bureau chief at CNN and created the 3D virtual reporter. Right. Uh, and a great guy who lives up here. But uh, he was the VP in charge from NBC of the site. And he said, yeah, because I was supposed to be the chief correspondent. I was supposed to be, like, on the air every day. And he said, no, let me tell you what they said in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, David. Uh, he, he pulled no punches. That's all right. You know what? You're in broadcasting. You deserve it. Did you see the uh, uh, article? There are a number of them. Information had a good one. People are getting burned out from Zoom because they're on camera all the time. <laughs> And, and and we don't have that problem, do we? You know, I felt really bad for it. They because I felt like this is this is kind of like a hate click article, right? Because the the lead was this woman who wanted to get her lips filled because she was right. like, "Oh, my lips look terrible on camera," right. and I was like, "Oh man, why did they do that?" You know, because I can totally see women are constantly judged by their appearances, yeah. right? Yeah. And being on camera is hard. I mean, you will never see me without a full face of makeup on this show ever. Uh, but, but because I, I some of, so this was, uh, this was the question. Is it outside pressure or is it internal pressure? Cause you know, a lot of people when they first hear their voice on a recording go, <gasps> I, sound, <Right. gasps> I sound like that. And I think probably same thing. People see themselves on camera and they go, Oh my God. And now they're forced to stare at themselves on camera hours and hours a day. Or is it that they feel yeah. like they're getting peer pressure to you should really look better? Well, I think it's internal because there's an external need. I mean, as a woman, I'm like, I know I don't look professional unless I meet a certain standard. Right. So you've got to look professional on these things. It's true. Um, it's true. Women on TV have always felt much more pressure. Oh, they have to they can't wear the same dress two days in a row. Oh, right. There's, there are even clothing rental companies designed for broadcasters Becky wow. Worley used to subscribe yeah because you can't if you're a, a a weather girl or a news reporter or an, or an anchor you can't guys I wear the same I rotate my jackets I only have about 10 of them <laughs> I, I don't I can't wear a different but women can't so there there are literally rental things mostly for weather uh, reporters because they're wearing Jesus. dresses so that they never right. wear the same thing twice yeah, and they have to pay their own salary, by the way. Oh, that yeah. That is not something oh, yeah. the, the company doesn't provides. pay. No, 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 no. So, no. yeah, you're, it's it's not awesome. Um, unless you're like Katie Couric. I'm sure she's got some things in her contract. Uh <laughs> yeah, no, some people do. In fact, when we first started on Tech TV, we had a wardrobe mistress, and we had they would take pictures of us. She went out and bought a lot of clothes for everybody. That went away really quickly. <laughs> that and the yeah. makeup artists disappeared. You do your own makeup, wear your own wardrobe. So that was expensive. Whoa, no makeup? Ooh. Well, you you, you had to put it on yourself. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That's when we knew Tech TV was in trouble. When they there were three things that happened. Uh, one was they got rid of the makeup artists. Uh, two was they got rid of the wardrobe uh, person, and three was they got rid of the oatmeal, the free oatmeal in the snack room. <laughs> that was really the thing. that was the final straw when people couldn't have breakfast. Right, Karsten? You come in, no oatmeal. Come on, man. Next, it's going to be coffee. So I've always made sure that we no, have you lots can't of, take coffee away from the journalists. No, no, can't take coffee away from anybody. Are you kidding? <laughs> Time Inc. We had we had free Pepperidge Farm cookies and wine nice. and beer. What? That's they used to have a if, bar cart that drove around Fortune's office when the magazine closed. Such yes, they did. On right. Fridays? Right. Such a bad idea. Yes. If you were a senior editor above, your credenza was stocked with liquor. I actually had to send yeah. a memo saying no more drinking in the office. Because <laughs> Anthony is a very talented mixologist. There is still in the cupboard over here all kinds of booze and mixers and stuff. Huh. And come, come, you know, well, it started, it was Friday at the end of the week, right? 
And then it would slip to Thursday. By the time, after a while, I was like, it's Wednesday, let's all get a drink. And everybody was drinking in the office, and I was really worried, not so much that productivity would go down, but that somebody would get in an accident going home, and I didn't want that to yeah. happen. So yeah. we kind what of- What was it? I think it was GitHub, if I remember correctly, had a whole stock bar there. I thought, yeah. not good in an office. I think it's what probably- if, And what if you're recovering? Yeah, yeah exactly. I just didn't, it, I felt like, yeah, it's nice, everybody's convivial, I'm really happy, you know, you're having a good time, and you're happy, but let's not do that anymore. I don't want no, to be responsible. It's the office Christmas party every week. Uh -uh. Yeah, Christmas party every week. That was pretty. That was pretty much it. <laughs> but boy, we did make a show. good drink. <laughs> yeah, the the drinks he made for the show that Remember we did that? at Christmas, Christmas show. Probably. He made Although, a different drink for every person on the panel. So fancy to match and he to match had, their and personality. Poor man, he was not feeling. Yeah, he was sick. God, can you imagine? <sighs> In nowadays, somebody sick making you drinks, you would you would <laughs> jail them. Jail them. That's what I mean. No, I'd be like, there's, oh, there's, kills all things. <laughs> there's a PTSD psychic burden that we are oh, all yeah. imposing upon ourselves, and it's not gonna. I don't think it's gonna go away right away. It's like the people in the Great Depression oh. who were penny pitchers to their very last dying breath. Right? It 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 hits you in the brain. Yeah, and I, I wrote the the day I wrote about this. The day that the death toll passed 9/11, it brought it all back for me, and it was. Ugh. And I realized it was the PTSD. Yeah. Was, yeah. 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 That's right. You you suffer still from PTSD from 9/11, but that was one discrete event. This is this has been this is going to habitually. Oh, well, that's what I wrote then. Is is, is this is this is 9/11 in slow mo? Yeah, very very slow mo, isn't it? Yes. And now, yes. of course, we far exceeded that death number. Yes. Uh, and it's it's going to be much bigger than that because well, they're finally doing the calculation that I, I proposed to editors three weeks ago and nobody listened to me. And finally, the New York Times and the FT are doing it. They're looking at so-called excess mortality. The total right. deaths over the average right. is more likely a count. Well, so many people what, are, minus are a dying few at home. Auto accidents not, we don't have. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not to mention all well, the divorces. Well, that's a cheery beginning Not to of the show. Not to mention all the divorces and the children who will be born in nine months. What are the other? Yeah. So I was trying. I was trying to find out uh, on the Google story about Google helping you find unemployment data based on your state. Yeah. I can't find. I can't find the Google update on that. I, I was wondering. This is an Engadget story. Do you think they got it wrong or? Let me see. Well, here. maybe Google cheat pulled it. I'm I'm looking for the actual. Here is the my, Google my... the Google link. You're right. Oh no, it does. Okay, it does. But now. It does. If I search unemployment, I get help and information oh, for Washington in Employment Security. Ah, and they yeah. know where you are. That's another thing. Are we going to um, become more complacent about privacy? We talked a couple of weeks ago about the Apple Google plan. Now, by the way, France is upset. Because they say we have created a program, an application for your phone, but Apple will not let us use their Bluetooth information. Apple says you can't use Bluetooth location information if it gets sent away outside of the phone. It, it's, it violates privacy. And the French authorities say, who cares? <laughs> we want it. And that's an interesting um, clash. Oh, so the government wants more data than the Apple. The government wants give. more data. Apple I says always tell you, I always say government is not your friend in privacy. Government is the key enemy. Right. It is It is the primary industry. Here is, and I think Apple's right. So Microsoft, this week Microsoft put out privacy policies. I just dropped it under security in our rundown, Microsoft's security stance. We'll just call it that. Uh, and it, it's there, preserving privacy while addressing COVID-19. And it's written by Julie Brill who is now their chief privacy officer and used to be at the FTC. And this list is excellent. It's seven points. It talks about uh, obtaining consent, getting data only for public health, getting the minimal amount of data and let users store and control their data so they get to choose whether it's on their device or in the cloud. Um, and then uh, you can't share it with people without consent or minimize what's shared and then delete it when you no longer need it for the emergency, which I thought was actually a pretty, that's a bold step right there. So I, I actually thought these were excellent uh, privacy protecting principles. And I was, 
wasn't surprised that Microsoft's doing this. Brad Smith has been very forward thinking about this. Julie Brill was on the FTC when the FTC started looking at privacy related to like IoT. So yeah, Brad Smith is, I, I, is at the front of this, yes. So this was I just thought this was good. I don't know if you found the link yet that I put in. Well, there. now we have somewhere it was in the rundown. A, a Republican senator is saying Jobs and Pachai, it's all on you I'm from Missouri. That's an <laughs> abdication of their job. It should be exactly. on everybody. Sorry. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, this is, you know, I'm a little cynical when Microsoft publishes something like this. Because oh, sure. I, they have an agenda. Like, like they actually push forward facial recognition laws. This Washington state is one of the first ones. And Microsoft basically wrote our facial recognition use law. Going and is forward. it a good law? Um, there, there are good things about it. Like all laws, it's a compromise. Right. Um, it's a common corporate jujitsu. Right. If you see a train coming down the track at you to you know, cleverly write a law that protects your real interests while appearing to protect the public interest. But th that law does say that, you know, governments need a warrant. There's a third party auditability <laughs> on the facial recognition stuff. Um, yeah. And that's one thing that these guys do is they say, well, government really needs to prove they need it. Blah, blah. Meanwhile, but we're going to get it. It's OK if we get it. <laughs> We'll we'll take that information. It's like Google making a credit card, saying the or Apple saying the merchant's not going to get any personal information. Yeah, but you are. Well, to be clear, Microsoft with regards to COVID nineteen data is saying one should have it except for the public health right companies companies right. that need it for that right. and that when they're done it should have everything a limited should be done time frame. That's the same as the medium post we referred to a couple of weeks ago where it was saying these these are the mm -hmm. things that you know are uh, you have to do to protect people. And I th I agree with that, but also in a crisis, you know, you can at the beginning of the crisis have the best intentions, but when it comes down to it and people are dying, it may be that we all go, Ooh. yeah, okay, fine, but please Microsoft give France the information. Yeah. It's, or uh, well, Apple. Apple, Apple give yeah. France the information cuz we need to save lives at this point. It's being a well, little so Leo, fussy. we asked about this uh, you asked about this last time you know the, the how many people are going to use it? I can't find it now. Um cuz uh, all of these Oxford, things are voluntary, right? Oxford did a study that if half use it, it's, it reduces it the R not huge difference. Yeah. So you don't need 100% compliance any more than your mask has to be 100% perfect. Your well, whole goal is to reduce the R not. They were saying 60 percent, uh, 60 percent compliance. But Singapore's track and trace. Let's see where their compliance is. Yeah, right but now. they're an authoritarian government. So I their would track and trace compliance is like at less than 20 percent. The what? last week when I looked. Yeah. So that's why I said so. It was, what? it was very, what is their app called? Um, what, what, Singapore. So they're uh, not, even though they could at this point, they're not enforcing the use of this app. It's still voluntary. I, I guess not. But why can't I find the name? Of, That's all right. We what's don't it need called? The I can't we got Google. the gist. What's the name going to do? I'm not downloading it. It's okay. Oh, well, no, the name, the name gets me the actual data point that I want. Because it was less than 20% last week, but this week it may be more, it may be less. The point is, I'm, I want to make sure we're factual. You know me. You know me and my journalistic self. You know me. <laughs> I couldn't care less. Fact schmacked. <laughs> and this is why Stacy uh. hates me. Um, <laughs> I don't hate you. No, I'm teasing. Lord. I know you don't. Uh, I loved, uh, here's a perfect example, Benjamin Net Netanyahu, whose trial was supposed to begin yesterday for corruption. Oh, but the COVID. <laughs> oh, but the COVID. Um, let's close the courts down. No trial. The courts are closed down. Uh, it, it's it, I, You watch because this is going to be a wonderful cover for a lot of companies and a lot of governments. A lot of corruption. And a lot of corruption. Oh, but the COVID, it's going to be the, the, new, the new saying. Um, of course, there's some terrible stuff going on. Amazon has suspended 6,000 accounts worldwide for uh, price gouging. I was uh, looking at a blood oximeter because, I, you know, that's one of the things they say is if you do get sick, watch your oxygen level because that's an early warning sign. 
And I thought it'd be handy. Uh, yeah, to... lots of people can't find those right now. Yeah, I, I on have show. one. And check the prices on them as they go up, 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 up. And the I one, have an excellent one. The one I bought from Viatom, the price. Only 20% of the population has downloaded the tracing app from Singapore. That's what you said. Sorry. You're exactly okay, right. Okay, I just, I needed to know that that was accurate. It was accurate. And now y'all know. She's perfect. And that was as of April 12th. So that yeah. was a week ago. Okay. Surpri it is surprising. We're back to pulse. But, you know, maybe that's what happens when you have an authoritarian government. If they don't compel you to do something, you're going to not do it. That's kind of the Well, the, it does erode back. public trust. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just noticed the oximeter I bought, the price has gone from $110 to $162 within a few days up and down. So. I got the well you. Well, they're nuts. The well you what is it well you well you I put it in the uh, in, in the rundown chat and you like it O2 ring love it love it it's very good the idea the, the and there was a good article in the New York Times yesterday by an emergency room physician what he said very good yeah wasn't that I thought uh, what he really well what he no said that was, was terrifying and now I like I have COVID and I don't know it <laughs> I mean my God well what he said was you know, we know that once your lungs just basically solidify that you can't breathe without moving your, you know, forcing them to breathe, that's when we're going to put you on a vent. Um, but that, he said, is really way down the road. It turns out your lung function starts to fail very early on, but you don't notice it because you're still able to expel carbon dioxide, so you don't feel short of breath. But what's happening is the virus is damaging the surfactants in your lungs, so you're not getting oxygen. So an oximeter is a good early warning sign because if your blood oxygen goes, you know, normally it'd be in the 90s, it should be 97, 98. Yes. But if it goes down precipitously, even if you can breathe, you hie thee to the hospital because that's what he said. If we can get you, then we can treat you. And and, and the treatment is on on forced oxygen, right? Yeah. Well, that, and they're starting to yeah. do that. They're doing cannulas instead of uh, vents. Right. But yeah. And they flip you over. And they flip you over. There's all <laughs> sorts of things that they can do. It's like a heart attack or anything else. The sooner you get there, the better. But but that's you see that. But that's the crazy thing right now is that everybody's being told don't go in. Because they didn't have the capacity, because they don't right. have the test, they don't know. Right. Um, it got so bad in some cases that that they were doing CT scans instead of because they didn't have any tests. The only way was to look at your lungs. Right. Um, it's 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 a horrendous abrogation of responsibility to humanity. What's going on? It's awful. You know, the thing bothers me more, honestly, is all the all the failings of late stage capitalism in this country, the huge income inequality. And it really bothers me more that more poor people and people of color are dying. They're losing their jobs. They're forced to go to work in a dangerous situation yep. uh, because they can't afford to lose their job. All of these issues, you know, we upper middle class folk are surviving fine, right. but I just breaks my heart. Uh, and so I, Nicole I, Hannah Jones, who is a brilliant journalist on the New York Times, an investigative journalist, um, uh, Ida, Bay, Ida Bay Wells is her is her Twitter account. She said, "Stop calling the clerks in the stores heroes. heroes. They're oh, not. They're victims. It's insulting. They're victims." Yeah, and uh, it just that again breaks my heart. And I go to the store, and these people they have to work because it's their job. It's the only thing they can do, um, and they're risking their lives because the protections are not very good. So she said uh, to call them heroes is to justify their exploitation right. by praising blue collar workers, right. public service. The progressive consumer is assuaged of her cognitive dissonance but from the Atlantic. Honestly, the, the, the poor grunts who had to go onto the front line and, and take the fire, they were heroes, too. Right. It's it is the <laughs> it's the people who have to you know face the onslaught. Uh, and they're usually the poorest, uh, least advantaged among us, unfortunately. And that's kind of like life. It's, uh, it's not a good thing. But that's not... that's what Stacy was saying earlier. I mean, that's what's that's the those are the besides trying to build broadband and build infrastructure, we have to rebuild the structure of society. That's the thing. And that's the, th that's the cracks the are showing. Oh, uh, this brings out every bit. Yeah. These these inequities no, were all the cracks there. have been showing. This is actually the utter just the, just the cracks boom. just collapsed everything. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs>
U.S. judge blocks Twitter's bid to reveal government surveillance request. This goes back six years. Twitter's been fighting for us, and we lost. Yep. They wanted to do a, a transparency report that would include... Uh, surveillance requests received from the U.S. government. A federal judge said that would harm national security. No, you don't. You can't do it. I uh, can't. I mean, I can't knock that. Uh, that's the way it's supposed to work, right? I, I appreciate Twitter trying to fight. I can for knock it. it. I can knock it. Well, but what if it does hurt national security? Uh, well, I, but I don't, do I trust this government? Yeah, I don't trust no. the government saying national security. Well, it, yeah, okay. It's not the Edward government. Though, it's the it took Edward Snowden to let us know what it's was going a, it's on. A, it's the courts, though. It's, I mean, look, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, it's the courts, but the courts are stacked now, so I just don't know. My my confidence in right. the system and in the courts right. has been purposely eroded. And yet, it is conceivable that it would damage national security to do this, right? It could, but but I'm, I'm not going to know now. I think we can work our way around national security. I think we have solved those. I mean, it violates national security that we do not live in glass houses and don't have door locks, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, we have to we have to make decisions about how far we want our privacy to extend and where we want the government. And I think the government, because of its power, the power to bring the state against a citizen is so great. They really have to justify the ability to look into our lives to the extent that they can with election. So I think they're trying to make a case. I don't think the case they've been making is compelling. Um, so, but, you know, if judges believe it, then then we'll lose that. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you're right. I mean, the theory is that you have a nonpartisan judication from right. somebody who's going to look at both sides and say, "Well, yeah, the government's made its case. This is this could potentially be damaging." Um, so, what was the name of the judge? Let's look up the judge. Uh, she was from the Northern California um, uh, U.S. District Judge Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers, uh, U.S. District Court for Northern California, which normally is a pretty liberal uh, jurisdiction. But you know, um, I don't know this judge. Who's who? Is Democrat. She? Yes. But of course, the Democrat, you know, Obama wasn't great with us either. And I'm no, an Obama fan. no, she's probably an Obama appointment, I would guess. But uh, where does it say? So Obama, yep, Obama appointed yeah, her. So, but I mean, look, all we got is the system. I I know, <laughs> but the, but the system's and, being torn down. Yeah. So we just don't know. That's yeah. my we reflex can, now. We can... How I guess you also have to wait against the public need. Is what Twitter is reporting in this transparency report important public information? Well, let's talk about that for a second, because what, what does Twitter actually know about you? The only thing they can really report to the government is your IP. Everything else is, well, and, and yes, the Well, end. I'll give you an example. Your I'll identity. Look at what happened with the Saudi regime when they put agents inside Twitter to track who was behind certain accounts. I'll give you an example from my own life. My daughter... Man, this was several years ago. We've always had horrible troll problems. I don't know why. It's something I did, I guess. But we've, uh, my daughter, mm, 10 years ago, maybe, a long time ago, she was a teenager, she was a kid, got what was essentially a death threat. And uh, I wrote to Ev, because I knew him, and I said, Ev, can you help us? You got a kid, you got a daughter, you understand? No. So uh, we, we were lucky. We found a Petaluma police detective who was willing to take on the case. He filed a, a subpoena mm -hmm. and uh, using the IP information provided by Twitter, because they respond to a lawful subpoena, he was then able to get a colleague. He found, he, he found the location. It was a Chicago ISP. He was able to get a colleague in the Chicago Police Department to subpoena the ISP and said, who was using this IP address at this time on Twitter? And they found it. It was a kid. The, uh, the detective in Petaluma got the Chicago PD guy to go over to the kid's house, talk to his dad. That was the end of it. <laughs> uh, how, however, if it had been somebody who really did want to do the nasty things that this tweet said, uh, you know, the, the question that the police ask is, are you in fear of your life? And if you are, they can act on it. So that was a government request for information. Mm -hmm. I think completely mm -hmm. legitimate. 
Now, I, don't, I think that that probably would have appeared in a transparency report as one of, you know, we got yeah. 700 government requests fine, this year uh, yeah. and responded to this many of them. What does the public need to know that number? Is it important? It's important for journalists who are trying to track what's happening because they're not just – it's not just things like your police request. It's also things like – not FISA necessarily, but um, – there might be FISA requests, uptick. and that probably yeah, I mean, it would be my guess that it's the FISA requests that Twitter wanted to reveal, and the the judge said no, you right. can't, right? Because those well, here, are here's what, those are national yeah. security interests. That's we're trying to get a terrorist, and we think we can get him. And the FISA court can even say, and Twitter, you cannot say anything about this request, you because revealing the request will alert the terrorists to the fact that we're onto them. So th that's national security, and that is – the Patriot Act does allow that. And so it may well be, we don't know, that the judge said, yeah, I'm looking at some of these, and some of these are that kind of FISA record request, but, and, no, and it would harm national security to reveal the interest of the, you know, the FBI in this person. I think that that could be. Way back when, when I ran local sites – the most common subpoenas we got were from police chiefs find, trying to find out the names of the unnamed police officers who were using our forums to complain about the chief. Right. Obviously, that's not a that's good not use of kosher. it. That's not kosher. And that happens. But that's Ooh, the point yeah. is you can't paint it all with one that's, brush. There's a variety. Right, but that's, but that's and the I don't think the transparency you're trying to deal with. But does the transparency report give you the information you would need to say, oh, I see what's going on here? Gee, there's a lot of requests coming from police in New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. You know. You also, I mean, those those transparency reports are designed to act as a canary in the right for a, a saying, canary. "Hey, the government." Yeah, is, yeah. I mean, so basically to say you can't do that, it stops journalists. It stops national security it's in the reporters Patriot Act, from though. knowing. It does. The Patriot Act does oh, allow. Yeah, that. I know. I saw this episode of The Good Wife. Goodness. <laughs> it's called a national security <laughs> letter. Um. But I think the law already says that Twitter can't report that in their transparency report. By the way, NLSs do not require prior approval from a judge. So there, the Patriot Act gives law enforcement some sweeping. Uh, this, is, this is the uh, analogy that you want to pay attention to during this time. Because of 9-11 and the, and the terror in 9-11, we gave law enforcement sweeping powers that were never then retracted. And here we are almost 20 years later, they still have those powers. Right, so sunsetting is an important design element. Well, and the Patriot Act does sunset, mm -hmm. but it keeps getting renewed. Keeps getting renewed, yeah. And that actually so is one I, of the things go, I... Go oh, go on. You go. No, you go. You go. Oh, I was going to say, I think it's really important for these track and trace efforts for COVID-19, for governments, if they're trying to get people, if you're going to eliminate the opt-in or if you're going to try to encourage people to do, to share your data, I think having a very narrowly defined uh, ask and then sunsetting that ask at either a time frame or when we achieve a certain policy goal, like, you know, 100 cases per day nationwide or something. So I think having those kind of, if we're going to do some sort of nationwide surveillance for track and trace, we need to have a those kind of sunsetting, narrowly defined in rules that sunset. Then there's okay. two. Then there's Tubi. You know, Tubi is kind of an interesting over-the-top streaming service because it's free, but it's ad-supported. Fox recently bought them. They are now going to TransUnion, the credit bureau, to get information about viewers so they can do targeted advertising. By the way, this is so not illegal that they put out a press release saying they're doing it. <laughs> this is so Canoe Credit Ventures, Bureaus. which Credit was a Bureaus venture firm evil. from. Yeah. Uh, Canoe Ventures was a venture backed effort by a couple cable companies to do exactly this way back in 2009 or 2010. And it failed um, because people were like, uh, no. But yeah, this is this is the dream. <laughs> to be to be to you, I said the partnership will combine its understanding of content viewing behaviors with TransUnion's cross verified consumer database. By creating a link from a device ID, it can draw insights around consumer preference. Quote, 
This is uh, Matt Spiegel, Executive Vice President of Marketing Solutions and Media Vertical at TransUnion. Quote, the, integrated, the integration of TransUnion data assets can help companies connect the dots to gain a more comprehensive understanding of today's consumer and reach them with confidence, especially as they move and consume content in new ways. With identifiers such as third-party cookies on the decline because we don't like them and we're blocking them, and media consumption changing, alternative identifiers such as home IP address are imperative for building a strong foundation of individual level identity and reaching consumers on devices like connected TVs. <clears throat> yeah, well, your smart datas are oftentimes sending, they're not tying into TransUnion, but they are sending a lot more data than most people anticipate. Yeah, but that is the problem about. is that any individual data, you could say, well, all, what do they have? The IP address. But any individual data, once it's combined with these other streams, and my God, the credit unions have so, credit bureaus have so much information about every financial transaction. If you can cross-reference my IP address, figure out my name, and then tie in my credit data, you know everything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and they'll and use that, that to extrapolate out things. But all they're going to do like, is what? Oh. Show ads? So they're going to... So like, well, Leo lives in an area where he's likely to get cancer. Cause, uh, so we're going to send him some ads for some medicine. That kind of thing. I don't know. What's wrong with that? It may be something as simple. I mean, like, I... Like, when I buy my house, credit report's going to definitely know that I have applied yeah. for a mortgage. Right. So last I week, imagine last week Leo was screaming that that all targeting should be killed. <laughs> this is a, a a case point in point of his uh, role as provocateur. <laughs> maybe yes, maybe no. You don't know what my real <laughs> opinion. Is. I don't know the real Leo. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Tubi says Lachlan Murdoch <laughs> in a statement. We'll immediately expand our direct to this is Fox. We'll immediately expand our no, direct that, to that's all I need to know. But I guess Fox is Disney now, right? <laughs> no, no, this is Fox. Oh, no, this is Fox. Oh, that's all I need Fox, to know. Fox, Fox. Yeah. Evil throw. Fact, because Fox didn't have any of this stuff with the, s the sale of its assets to Disney, they want to build up all this stuff. That's why they bought Tubi for four hundred forty million dollars. Uh, Tubi will immediately expand our direct-to-consumer audience and capabilities and provide our advertising partners with more opportunities to reach audiences at scale. Honestly, though, I kind of, as somebody who's trying to sell advertising, advertisers want to advertise to people who are going to buy. Otherwise, they're buying ads that are wasted. They may even be annoying to the people who see them. It's not an unreasonable thing for an advertiser to say, well, I just want to advertise to people who are interested in our product. And it's not yeah. it's not a harm to, to people. The problem is not that. The problem is if it's extended to other things, like, oh, I'm going to also send this information to insurance companies to make sure that Leo doesn't get life insurance. Or so I got agreement they're today going to... to go ahead. Sorry. Just, no, you, you know, I just want there's a little delay in the, in the Skype. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah, my internet must be terrible today. It is. It's not um, so there good. is, yeah. yeah. Or uh, IBM and I think it was Visa or MasterCard was looking at consumption patterns and social media pa uh, things you post on social media to establish credit scores. And, and you know, so if you think about like, what if everybody who's watching The Real Housewives doesn't pay their bills on time or what if what if right. enough people you don't want to combine watch it those. Don't, yeah then you suddendly start getting these like weird Red data lines. scientists who are like "Ooh, <laughs> this is relevant well you're, you're not even gonna, you're not real, gonna real housewives know that redlining course. like we will not lend money to people who watch real housewives sorry right and, it, it's, and you're not gonna nobody's gonna sit at a desk and say oh that equals that it's just the, the, you know the, the correlation is gonna be there right. right well i'll give you i'll give you a privacy thing that bothered me today what so I just got approved uh, for 100% paid CPAP for my sleep apnea because of 9-11. Nice. Uh, well, the data goes right to Aetna. Oh, yeah. And well, they want to make no sure. Choice. And this is the, and the reason why, and it's hard to quibble with this. I, I'm really torn on this. Aetna is paying for this. They're putting out money. So they want to make sure you use it because the health benefits of a CPAP machine 
accrue if you use it a certain number of hours a week. Otherwise, they spend a lot of money on something that's just mm -hmm. sitting in the corner and they're still going to have to pay for your bad your bad health outcomes. So this is one of those cases where I think if it is, I, I think if the oh, data is like, no, 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 no. Know. I think if the data is narrowly, narrowly, it's, it's defined, you opt in and you know exactly what's happening. I kind of think it's okay. I don't think they should get the actual health data, but I do think saying Jeff has worn this is fair data for them to get. Oh, but they're getting the actual health data. Well, I know. And that's so I, I want to make clear exactly where and that's the hard thing about talking about data sharing is we have to be very clear on what data we're actually sharing. They, they require it to be worn four hours a night, which alone tells me mm -hmm. that nobody can tolerate the damn thing. <laughs> we'll oh, no, people hate them. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> You've not worn it yet? No, I've gotten it yet. Well, normally they would send someone to my house, a technician. Yeah. How about Are you ripping sure off the insurance the companies? Actually, the doctor gets the health data and the insurance firm gets the usage data. Really? Okay. I mean, you should definitely double check. It makes sense, usually though, because that is if somebody's been prescribed a CPAP machine and isn't wearing it, the likelihood of death and illness is higher. And that's what insurance companies are trying to figure out. I can um, why right, so why do don't that. they have a pill dispenser that makes sure? I mean, well, this would be good too. You know, the, the old sure people should have a pill meds. dispenser that takes yeah. pills, right? Yeah. yeah. They they want that, Jeff. They do. The problem, do. I, I can tell you why, but it's boring. generally what's going to happen is these will be voluntary. It's voluntary, Jeff. You don't have to take the money. These are voluntary. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yes. If you want to pay the whole thing yourself, fine. Fine. You, you get it without the data. It's voluntary, and so. That's how they get around it. Nobody's making you take your pills. Nobody's making you wear a CPAP. But if you want us to pay for it, you better give us the uh, information that you're wearing it. And I don't think that's unreasonable. The problem is that, you know, the, uh, what you create is a class structure for privacy. If you really mm -hmm. want privacy, uh, you have to be able to afford it. Yep. And if, you can, and if you have to use the insurance to pay for the CPAP machine, well, you don't get any privacy. Right. Which is interesting. Well, heck, and just, uh, just affording and having insurance is kind of a class thing nowadays. Yeah, privacy. Oh, amen. A lot of things are a luxury. Privacy is one of them now. Uh, get ready because the Health and Human Services is built a tool called HHS Protect Now. It's already up and running as of April 10th. It helps officials compile reports on coronavirus spread by collecting data from state and local government, healthcare institutions, and colleges. We don't know what the data is, but we do know where it's coming from. Palantir. Speaking of people you don't trust. Palantir is Peter Thiel's shady company that has been doing this kind of thing for business for a long time, collecting data uh, from a variety of sources, compiling it. I don't think they have their own data collection stuff, right? They just compile it from other sources. I don't know. Nobody really knows, actually. Well, I, well, I do, but works. I think this is a case where if the government gets its hands on the app data, what does Palantir do with it? Palantir, according to The Verge, has at least two active contracts with Health and Human Services. One they signed in January, one less than two weeks ago. According to The Daily Beast, based on sources with knowledge of the project and confirmation from HHS itself, the HHS Protect Now platform which is set to be unveiled later this week, pulls data from across the federal government, state and local governments, healthcare facilities and colleges to help administration officials determine how to mitigate and prevent spread of the coronavirus. Well, that seems fine. 187 data sets integrated into the platform. Hospital capacity and inventories, supply chain data, diagnostic and geographic testing data, demographic statistics, state policy. This is what Palantir does. Takes all these disparate data sources, combines them to give you actionable information. And let's kill some black people and uh, well, save some rich people. That's where you would people. find that information, though, is that's one of the pieces of information you could find out. Is Right, good, so this should all be, all that information should be public. Good Lord. In a way this, that could, others could be using it. Yeah. HHS is relying on private sector partner contributions of data, but for a good uh, thing, right? One would hope. One would hope, but but if it's not, it's an open source question. So so I wrote I wrote a piece this week about medicines um, open 
information ecosystem and how we have things to learn from that. And uh, I'll go to that in a second. But one thing the EU is putting out is a data portal where a lot of data, tremendous amounts of data are going to be um, available to all researchers. Now, if that's the case, I know what the data is and I can see where it's being used, uh, then I'll have more faith in it. But if it's being done and decisions are being made with it in the black box of government, that's what everybody complains about with algorithms. But now it's our lives at stake. Death panel. Or pre-crime. A couple of years ago, Palantir right. was working with the city of New Orleans to do right. predictive policing. Even city council members didn't know about it. The city uh, had a contract, which they recently terminated after six years with Palantir, to figure out where crimes were going to be committed. Wow. Predictive policing. They... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so this is the kind of I stuff. I really Palantir. don't trust Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, this is the kind of stuff Palantir does. Yeah, if you know, if Minority Report style pre-crime policing happens, it's going to happen from companies like like this. I'm I'm not surprised. So you want an open? So you you actually wrote a, a good piece in Medium. You want a, a open? Well, so no, what I'm arguing ecosystem. is that it already is open. What was fascinating? So I interviewed for I have my, I have my Twitter list right there, bitly slash COVID Twitter list. And I interviewed four scientists so far who were amazing, which you can find on Buzz Machine. And as I was listening to them and talking to them about, about how they operate in two ways. One is the preprint servers. That is to say, papers that have not been, uh-oh. I have go to Buzz paid, Machine. I haven't go to Buzz Machine. my com. medium backsheesh. I should have put, it's on Buzz Machine. It's there. You can go to there. Uh, I'm starting free. to really hate medium. I know. Um so uh, they have preprint servers where papers are put up uh, that have not been uh, uh, peer reviewed yet and have not been published. And yes, there are problems, can be problems with that. But it's really amazing to see there have been 4,000 COVID papers so far. Uh, uh, some of them uh, crap, but a hell of a lot of them very useful. And I looked at, there's a paper that was done that's very controversial right now in Santa Clara County, California, that looked at and argued about the uh, uh, amount, uh, it was a, a serology, a blood study to find out how much was, uh, uh, how prevalent is the virus. There's much controversy about it. Well, the same day, five phenomenal uh, epidemiologists and virologists came in and in great detail on Twitter criticized the report point by point and its, and its, and its conclusions. The, the um, report itself hadn't been peer reviewed, but in a way, this is not been peer reviewed. This is peer this reviewed is peer right reviewed. now. This yeah. is. Yeah. Peer review at the in speed public. of the internet. Yeah. So, so I thought about this and I thought, well, yeah, that's the what we're all in is an open information ecosystem, right? Uh, so I start off saying that that uh, we are we in journalism and media are no longer the deliverers of information. The information is already delivered. It's already there. So what do we have to figure out is how do we add value to that? And what the what the what the do doctors are doing that's so fascinating to me is they're adapting. Right. One of the doctors I talked to, Angela Rasmussen from Columbia, said that when she had her last epidemic, she didn't have preprints. It took a year to get a paper out and get learnings. Right. Thank God we have this now. Now, meanwhile, we've had bad papers. We had the paper about hydroxychloroquine that went out into Twitter and then into Trump's brain and out his mouth. And some people have died as a result, uh, it would appear. Uh, but, the, but we've also had cases where um, but in that case, the doctors were on Twitter saying, no, bad paper. Stop. Don't don't judge this. Right. So so medical Twitter, social media with the preprint world is resulting in a phenomenal uh, ecosystem here of information getting out and getting judged. So you need some things in that. Right. You, they needed a way to find they had to make things open. Number one. Number two, they had to find ways to find the information. Uh, and organize it. Number three, they needed a way to criticize it. Number four, you needed a way to figure out who's really criticizing and are they any good or not? Because I've had people, doctors come to me and say, that person, that guy, he doesn't belong on your list and here's why. Um, but you see why then, peer review has always happened offline in the past. There is a risk, if everything gets published, that people will not be able to weigh, you know, yeah, sure, okay, great. It got peer reviewed in effect in public on Twitter, but that doesn't mean that people didn't read the initial report and believe it. And the New York Times published it. They're not seeing the Twitter takedown of it later. So there is well, they a should risk have. So the New York this Times all today, in public, right? Well, the New York Times today had a piece. That I, I, I spent two hours this morning doing a tweet storm, believe it or not. Or as, um, uh, as Karsten called it, a tweet typhoon. 
that was me. That was me. Oh, that was that you. Was okay. <laughs> um, so um, I just think uh, I feel like there should be somewhere better than Twitter for all of this to happen. But no, that's the that's the you see that no, it's new, it's naughty. Uh, that's the point. The doctors are using it. They're using it brilliantly. They're finding each other. Um, and in the case of this paper, right, the New York Times, you know, the vaunted New York Times, did a horrible story about that Santa Clara paper saying, well, this guy did it, and it could mean that it could be some people don't like someone he did, but blah, 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 That's right? just poor science and I writing, went through, right? Un, un, it's bad. Yeah. You should never do a preprint. So there's rules. You shouldn't do preprint re reporting until you go to at least two or three scientists and ask. Who, who of yeah. credentials, yeah. who give you a different view, and you include that in. Now, in the case of this paper, this guy's stuff is being used by the people who are out there demonstrating like zombies saying, stop this. Right. Uh, I'm not, it's not necessarily his fault, but they're using it to say, see, this isn't so bad. And and so they didn't, um, uh, they didn't even Google them, right? So the Times didn't do its job. The job should have been, here is how epidemiology is being politicized. Here's what you need to know about it, and so on and so forth. So I was ready to go and look and say, well, I wonder what San Jose is happening. Because San Jose took sports reporters and put them on the COVID beat. Right. Well, I was wrong. Great report. Oh, Excellent. that's great. Excellent. Well, you Journalism know, the standard the among news. sports reporters is a lot higher. Well, this was this is a science report. Oh, Just okay. as it's a science report. <laughs> okay. um, but... But my point is that, 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 that we're all in this open information ecosystem, right? We got to kind of, it's just, it's just there. You can't do anything about it. You got to deal with preprints. You got to deal with social media. Right. How do you use it well? And, and medicine is teaching us how to use it well. So the, End res of germ the responsibility of uh, journals of record like the New York Times is to do their work before they publish. So yes. preprints are published without any screening, but before they republish, the information in a preprint, they need to do their job. Exactly. And maybe, you and know, I mean, things are going to so slip through, aren't they? I mean, that's what... Let, let, me, let me just throw this out as a working journalist who has worked recently in what is a very high-pressure yeah. environment. Yeah. You don't always have time. You're usually working against a this should have been up an hour ago deadline kind of thing because it just came out an hour ago and somebody else has already issued a broken Mistakes news or will breaking happen. news. And what happens is you will try to be calling your sources, but you know they're also busy. So I get it. These things should not be happening, but this is part of the challenge of doing news in right. real time. And right. And so, and so Stacy, but, 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 when we come on this show and there's been a story that's happened and I've seen something out there and it involves one of your areas of expertise, I wait to hear what you say about it because you have expertise and I trust you about that. And that is your brand and you're not going to ruin that. Um, and, and that has value. Um, yes. And, what, and, if, what if so, experts don't agree? Well, you, say, you, you, you find agree. the way to express them. They don't. Yeah. They don't. They're, the Not journalism good. world is firing people like me left and right because yeah, we're expensive. They bring in – I know that. They bring in so many young people who, I mean, and I've trained a lot of young journalists, you know, and I'm like, oh, you are just not smart. But it's not that well, they're not smart. that's why I'm doing they this just, stuff is to try to train them too, is to say this is what's out there. Right. But um, they can't, we put they, those but, journalists on GA beats where they're literally rewriting press releases. And then no, when I something agree, happens. Agree. But, so, but even in this case, Stacey, maybe this is to your point, even the New York Times screwed it up badly. Right. And oh, my yeah. point here was it wasn't hard to go on. There were five epidemiologists with long Twitter, well-known, people that any science reporter would know, Mark Lipsitch, others. And, and it was easy to find them on Twitter. And there they were within hours had given a peer review. And the New York Times ignored them. So should we not read the New York Times instead read Twitter? Well, in some things, yes. <laughs> oh, God. This that was really bad editing. Reasonable. I'm very depressed. Because this I wasn't reading reasonable. Twitter. Twitter Twitter's is not, not a media edited brand. at all. It's unedited. Twitter is not a media brand. I was reading five great epidemiologists yeah, on Twitter. You chose who to read, yeah. Twitter is not a thing. When, when the media says, Twitter says, that is the greatest lie of all. Twitter right. doesn't say a thing. Right. 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 That's an uh, old I mask think we should, be a way to look at the world. One, it behooves one to remember the immortal words of Stakem. <laughs> <laughs> Friendly reminder, in times of uncertainty and misinformation, anecdotes are not data. Good data is carefully measured 
and collected information based on a range of subject-dependent factors, including but not limited to controlled variables, meta-analysis, and randomization. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. Stakem didn't forget. You shouldn't forget. Oh, my goodness. I, I, in my Twitter story today, I said, listen, I'm not a science reporter. I'm a guy who, tr who retweets Stakem's ad, uh, admiringly. Yeah. And rate my room on Skype. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Jeff, uh, you've been leading me to the zeitgeist lately. I'm really. That's what this show is. Oh, my God. That's what we're supposed this to be. This week in zeitgeist. <laughs> what? We named it wrong. Oh. Twiz. It's Twiz. <laughs> we're I gonna, want that T-shirt. We're rebranding the whole damn thing. Well, can we get a new theme I'm, song I'm with it, please? Quiz. Yes, I'll be and we'll get a new, we'll get a new theme song. It's not going to no, be this week tweets. in Mundschutz. It'll be this week in Zeitgeist. So, by the way, I didn't know that Jason writes music. Oh yeah. So I said, can you Is please like write a us a damn theme song? Well, Willie, <laughs> we should get a better theme song. I admit it. We should. I like we, the I quarters as much we don't as the hear next it. guy. Yeah, we don't hear See, it. The we poor don't... audience hears it. We don't hear it. <laughs> What if we have Deep Mind because they do have a composing thing? We'll just have Deep Mind compose something for us. There's nothing Our more Jason appropriate. Be <laughs> it will be weird. It will be <laughs> weird. That's true. Let's uh, take a little break for our one and only uh, fine advertiser, and then we shall. God bless you. As, as Stakem says, bless. Steak and bless. Um, our, our show today brought to you by This Week in Google, brought to you by ZipRecruiter. By the way, I should as parenthetically mention that many of our employees are also brought to you by ZipRecruiter. We use them and love them. But here's a message they sent. Right now, we cannot be overwhelmed. We have to work to keep our loved ones safe and protect our communities. We have to work to stay strong, to stay connected, to stay focused. We have to work to inspire, to innovate, to build new solutions. But for all of this to work, we have to work together. At ZipRecruiter, we connect employers and people every day. But today is different. We're partnering with first responders, government officials, the medical community, the innovators, and the manufacturing, transportation, and food distribution industries. We want to make sure we're finding the right people for the right jobs right now. Let's work together. And uh, the website is ziprecruiter.com slash work together. I kind of admire this. I really need some nice piano music behind it, some dramatic piano music, but you get the idea. ziprecruiter.com slash work together together, especially if you're looking for people in these vital industries right now. ZipRecruiter's great. ZipRecruiter.com slash work together. And thank you, ZipRecruiter. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for not running away from the topic as a sponsor, from being around and recognizing we're all in this together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a challenge because, of course, you don't want to be a downer in an ad. I'm seeing on TV a lot of, um, and that's why I said the piano music, they all have the same Somebody's writing piano music, making a lot of money for the dramatic. <laughs> Jason, quietly, mm -hmm. Jason. Maybe that's what we need, some dramatic piano music, right? Um, but you see a lot of those ads. Uh, my favorite is the Uber ad. Have you seen the Uber ad? No. Oh, my it's, God. I don't watch TV. It's I wonder not. if I can play it without. Um... I'm not a snob. I just don't like to watch <laughs> let me, TV. Let me ask. That was a delayed reaction. Let me ask Karsten. If I, can I play internet. the Uber ad? <laughs> Here, this is from uh, Ad Age. This is the Uber ad. I'll play it a little bit, but I'll play it like in a little window. There's the piano music, very important. Kind of the, the minor key, people looking out a window, waving. They're all sheltering at home. They're sad. They're eating on their roof. They've got a dog, but nothing much else. Look, she's handling the box with tongs. Um, they're zooming each other. Oh, they've turned their house into a playground for the children. Uh, playing frisbee, washing foods, dancing. This is the Uber ad. There's no cars in the Uber ad. There's just a lot of people at home, actually. Somebody painting a heart on their window. A dog licking yoga. People, <laughs> which dogs do, eating the toilet paper. There she is giving her husband a shave. That's not going to happen, Lisa. They're hugging. She's pregnant. She's looking out the window. A lot of people looking out the window now. Now there's a little baby looking out the window. There's an old man looking out the window. And then stay home for everyone who can't. 
thank you for not riding with Uber. It's, it's the nicest thing Uber has done. It's a ever. wild ad. Thank you for not riding with Uber. Did you see? I put in the in the in the rundown chat. Uh, the Dove's courage is beautiful. Dove's always been good on that kind of thing. Dove's right? been good on this. So Dove, this is this is the the poor healthcare workers who have to wear these masks and wear all this stuff, and their faces just get mangled by it. <sighs> so they and need so to they use said, Dove beauty products. No, 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 no. Don't be cynical. <laughs> no, I'm not oh, cynical. You should be cynical when it comes to Dove. Well, that's what Steakums will tell you. Steakums says, always remember, I'm a brand. I'm trying to sell you frozen meat product. <laughs> but but there's good brands. But there's all good brands. Our, all of our sponsors, for instance, are good brands. They are indeed. Uh, I love you. I know you wrote this, Jeff. Snooty Times Journos yes. ask, <laughs> is Twitter good? And it's a <laughs> panel discussion among uh, really mostly cooking and style uh, columnists at the New York Times. About is Twitter good again? Kind of, yeah. I don't want to spook it by writing about this. I think part of it is just the absence of feeling of dread that you should be doing something better with your life. You know, I every time I read Twitter, and I gotta just follow different people, I guess, I get depressed. Yeah. It's depressing for me. You don't follow enough corgi columns. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't know if that's going to help. You know, Twitter is like wonderful for pictures of dogs and adorable things and But yes, then the bad stuff sneaks in too. You the, just well, I mean that's the way the world is. Yeah, but I don't need to You it's I don't need to go it's there. It's like when you're meditating, you choose what to focus on. You're like, I see this and I'm letting that go. I see yeah. this, I will embrace it. So, okay, let's just do a little sample of my Twitter feed. Elon Musk tweets, there are now 420 operational Starlink satellites. Okay, Sound so let's help you here. Unfollow Elon Musk. Let's start. We're going to clean up your Twitter I just feed. Just point go this ahead and unfollow. I just want to point this out. That sounds but like do a... do follow bored Elon Musk. Yeah, I do. I do actually follow. So this sounds like just, oh, that's cool. They've got 420. And then you realize 420 is code for marijuana smoking. And so he's doing a marijuana joke. Okay, you're right. Unfollow. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're right. All right. No. Uh, See, we're fix this up. Help, help now, me. Now, wait, now wait, 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 wait. While you do that, you're going to replace it with a corgi. You got to replace every it with a corgi. Ki every feed. time a, uh, a Twitter feed dies, a corgi gets its wings. Okay. Yes. So I'm just going to search so, for corgis. Gonna... I'm not a fan of corgis, but all right. Oh, here's, but don't, don't. Here's, uh, here's this corgi guy, friend. my corgi named Duke from Eduardo Aroles. <gasps> That is not a corgi, but it is adorable. It isn't a corgi, is it? So this is there's no. even even corgi Twitter is full of liars. That's I not a corgi care. either. Oh my goodness! A corgi smeared with jam and passed out <laughs> on the floor <laughs> after eating too much jam. Uh, okay, uh, here's See? a now these are corgis. This is a a group of corgis is called a corganization. Okay, I'm not following corgi stuff. See, do you feel better now? No. Do you feel just a little bit better? No, that's horrible. Okay, well then, what? Here's what here's another one that I like. VCs congratulating themselves. Quoting my hero, <laughs> Paul Graham. That's, a, by the way, a good feat. And this is Paul Graham. Within YC, we effectively reinvented last names. So many founders share the same first names that we started saying, for example, Steve from Reddit, which is exactly what Steve de Reddit means in French, or Steve von Reddit in German. Okay, Paul oh Graham's boy. usually a little more profound than that. Okay, there's no, Father Robert. No, he thinks he is. He's got MFing snakes in his MFing broadband box. Yeesh. That's kind of oh, yeah, they love that there because they're warm, squirrels like yeah. it too. yeah. <laughs> That's going to slow it down. Oh, Peter Frampton, 70 years old. Peter apparently doesn't know how to use Twitter, so he's, he's, his quote is cut off, but I'll click it so we get the whole thing. 70. He's 70. Peter Frampton comes alive. Okay, fine. Uh, how things work. This is how machine learning checks if you're social distancing properly. See, this is good. This is probably somebody from, yeah. from you. Do you follow Quanta Magazine? This is what I said follow earlier, that. yeah. I like Quantum Magazine. Yeah, that's good. See these people? Not not so. They're red. Oh, look at all the red boxes. These people are bad, bad. So what do we do? Yeah, do but we they may live in the same house. Right. See, I walk next to my wife because, you know, I've already got her germs. Right. <sighs> I don't know. And then there's Trump, which I don't want to see. Okay. 
Joel, a friend. I know art when I see it. It's a helicopter chase on this freeway for the 405. Okay. Uh, there's my friend Ant, so that's okay. Sure, Ant's that's good. good. Stakem's oh, good. Something from Stakem. Chris Hayes is good. Yeah, Chris Hayes. He's one of those M MSNBC guys. Jim Acosta from uh, uh, CNN, right? It's, it's, he's a White House correspondent for, is it CNN? Can we ask Fauci what he thinks of possible second wave during flu season? Why is he asking this on Twitter? Jim, you're in the briefing. <laughs> Why are you asking this on Twitter? Why? Why? And then well, here's... You, so what was happening was Redfield, the head of uh, the CDC, I think was we've been on. I, I don't have the sound on, but I'm guessing he had to be he had to walk the plank as Fauci did before. Oh, poor Fauci. Because Redfield said the second wave is going to be worse and, and Trump was enraged. Uh, Trump is enraged should be the Twitter uh, motto. Mm -hmm. um, all right. See, I'm, I'm I, I don't already, follow Trump. Well, I don't you follow him, but follow you can't Trump. avoid no, I him. I refuse to. But, but, but I don't follow him, but you can't avoid him. Jeff, it's all you retweet him sometimes. I I actually will. I refuse to follow him. I will get angry and and scream at him. But that's why somebody is reporting. Like get Trump in my feed. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like Twitter. Well, Ant Ant did a. Uh, you know, a, uh, a filter. So you can I should only, them. yeah, I should only follow Ant. That's what I should do. <laughs> That's the filter. Um, uh, this is scary, but it's okay. I'm going to consider the source, which is a very progressive left leaning uh, publication called in these times, the head of the postal workers union says the postal service could be dead in three months. The postal, yeah, that's old. The postal June. No, this is April 16th, 2020. The Postal Service can't... Oh, no, but... What? Sorry, June? the story is that the they, they were talking about it when Trump did it as part of but the... But there's going uh, to be money? There's going to be money for the Postal Service? No, there's not. He, he denied no, it. And not. so they were like, well, then the Postal Service will shut down by June. I see. So the story itself is not new. The, okay. Sorry. So I shouldn't worry about Written it. it up. The Postal Service well, is going to be just I, fine, right? A lot of people did buy stamps. What, which which is just so mean. If the Postal Service is gone, that stamp is worthless. I just want to point out, FedEx and UPS are not going to honor your we, Postal we Service will stamp. Still, we will still have. I think we constitutionally, service. don't we have to? Isn't it in the U.S. Constitution of the United States of America that there well, shall be? Well, what does be? that mean anymore? Well, all right. We're supposed to have three three arms of government, too. Uh, Zoom, okay. You say I'm angry, Steve. Yes, I know. See, yes, this is why I'm I, angry. I don't listen to this show because it's like more Twitter. Uh, well, let's let's leave Twitter and let's, let's leave go alone. back to talking about. Do we have a change log? Let's. You know what, Jeff? Do you have that the drummers and those horn guys? Bring them in. Let's do the thing. But 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 are they have, how do you play a trumpet with a mask on? That's a hard thing. It's not well played. Listen, you can tell. <laughs> Actually, that's quite well done. Google has added a feature. I don't know. Do you want this? It's rolling out slowly. You're going to change the sensitivity of the Hey Google. Oh, I 100% do. Is your is your Google responding too quickly? No, it's not responding fast enough. Or oh, you like, want to turn up the sensitivity? Oh, you want, like, oh, you want, you want to be... Oh. Yeah, because I walk downstairs and there's one. I don't know what it is about the acoustics or the. I don't know, but I, I'm always constantly. It's, I'm right next to it. I'm like, hey, G, what's the weather? Because it's right by my front door before I walk the dog. So I'm like, coat, no coat, and it's. I always have to like shout it. So, so this I'm is not this. available to everybody. When it is available, it will be on the app in the privacy section. It's got a new settings page. You got a little slider, a little slider. Uh, you got in the middle, you got default in the left, you got least sensitive on the right, you got most sensitive and that's per speaker. So I could mm -hmm. see that you would want this. Maybe if you've got a speaker in the living room, that's always waking up with the TV show, you would make it less sensitive. And then for you, when you walk the dog, the one nearest there, you'd make it more sensitive. Does that mean, I don't know what more sensitive means though. Like it, it's, it's listening harder. Assume no, I assume it will be less discriminatory. It might generate more false positives. I'll there see if I can go. turn it on and tell you. That's a good question. That's a good that's and that's a good answer. Google Fi is getting eSIM support. That means 
you can use it on your uh, new iPhone. Uh, it's. Ooh. I don't think it'll still do the Google. F the, the, the 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 secret sauce of Fi is that it it goes between T-Mobile, Sprint, U.S. Cellular, or Wi-Fi, depending on what works better. I don't know if you have to have special hardware to do that or not, but at least you don't need a SIM. You can set it up by your by going online, which is nice. And that's a feature of the uh, new iPhone or the, all the iPhones is they have e-SIMs, no physical SIM. And Google Fi is a very good choice for data, actually, I think. I have mm -hmm. it on my iPad. But I put a SIM in, but I guess I don't have to anymore. So that's nice. Uh, in, in, for example, India, they have mostly phones with two SIMs. Does the iPhone in India have two SIMs? Or? Uh, yes, I think they have a dual SIM iPhone for India. Dual SIM, yeah. yeah. You kind of have to in India because the areas covered by carriers, first of all, there are many, many carriers, and the areas covered are small. So it's not unusual at all that you would have different carriers depending on where you are in your neighborhood. But but Facebook, we'll get back to it, I guess, in a second. Facebook spent a fortune investing oh, in yes. Indian Oh, yes, that's our next story today. after we finish okay, the change. Okay, fine. Yes, all right. Uh, well, go ahead, Jeff. The, it, I, it, 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 there is an old adage that no computer program is ever really done until it can fetch email. Google Meet is adding Gmail integration. <laughs> Not going to help. Just what you needed. Grid layout and improved low lighting quality and more. Meet, of course, is the app that is getting a lot of usage. We do a lot of Google meetings now. Uh, it's been crap for me. It's not good, as good as Zoom, I think. And by the way, Zoom I, should, much better. I should mention Zoom has really gone the extra mile to um, yes. to improve security. They just released version 5.0. As we mentioned last week, Alex Stamos well-known head of security at Yahoo and Facebook. Don't blame him for all the bad stuff that happened, he says. But uh, he, he came in as a consultant. They hired a former Microsoft security uh, person who's really good. Is, is it Katie Masura? She's very, very, very good. Uh, they're doing, they've rewritten, they're really working on improving their security. So I feel like yep. Zoom, because it is the easiest to use and because everybody you know wants to use Zoom, it was really important. It's an opportunity for Zoom. And the good news is they took it seriously and they seem to have done that. I had a thing. two and a half hour call day with somebody in Vienna it's and her so sound kept going off. Ugh. I couldn't figure out what it was. Her video was fine. I don't know if it was Zoom or if it was her, her, her machine, but it was very weird. YouTube is going to, YouTube Music, which has replaced in many cases Google Music, and if it hasn't yet, it will for you has added a new tab. Explore. Explore. I uh, So I have subscribed. In fact, I'll do it right now. I've subscribed to uh, Google Music forever, and all of the features, I guess, are slowly migrating over. Um, let me see. Oh, I don't have the new tab yet. I don't have an Explore tab. But maybe someday soon I will. M music discovery is actually a fairly important thing. One of the things... Spotify keeps winning, not because they have more songs. Everybody's got the same libraries, roughly. Not because maybe of the user interface, but because of their playlist capability, which people love. And I think because of the Discover Weekly playlist that they make every week for you, so you can discover new music. I think that's a really important part uh, of any music service. And uh, Google's probably looking over their shoulder at Spotify saying, how can we be more like them? This will replace the now defunct... Well, and Spotify... Go ahead. I was going to say they were they were first with lots of integrations. Like remember how you used to only be able to get Google Music in like googly places, right? So I think that's another advantage as an independent purveyor of streaming music and having the wide widest catalog for a while. I think that's kind of that helped it. And I'm going to yes, run down a rat advancing. hole real quickly here, uh, okay. but then I'll get back to the change log. But Sonos, which was the king of all this, has announced they're going to do mm -hmm. they're going to do a radio station. Sonos Radio. It's a free streaming music service. It has a lot of radio stations. They're going to combine not all, but many of the radio stations on iHeart and CBS and Radio.com. They'll also have their own Beats One style station. Apple has a station on their music thing uh, that that will uh, play music. Again, this is I think is about discovery. You poor Sonos people. I know. Still trying, still know. trying to find some value in that overpriced speaker. 
Customers can listen yeah, I feel bad worldwide, for you. worldwide, Jeff, via the Sonos app on their Sonos devices <laughs> and will be located <laughs> in the brand. Whoop de doo. Global radio stations available for our customers. Sonos' original programming will be available in the U.S., Canada, U.K., Ireland, and Australia starting yesterday. So I'll have to try it. It's available now. Uh, there'll also be ad free artist stations, kind of Pandora style. The first station will be centered around, oh, too bad, Radiohead frontman Tom York. Is that okay, Jeff? He's, he's okay, right? I think that would appeal to a lot of the Sonos buyers out there. Yeah, probably. Radiohead, we love it. Brittany Howard of Alabama Shakes, I like them. David Byrne, love him. Uh, and third man records are going to be new artist stations launching regularly. So that's just a side. It's not a Google. It's not a Google, but it's a sideline related to the new Explore tab in YouTube Music. And finally, the Google Play Store is pushing health and fitness apps. And Android TV gets a Stay Mindful and Fit row. I don't know anybody who uses Android TV. I do. I have a Shield. So there's a new row. The whole thing is organized around rows, and it'll be a get mindful and fit row. You know, there is actually a good reason to do that. See, look at that. You got your Peloton. You got your Dance Fitness with Jessica. G these are all, I think, mostly paid. But anyway, there it is, your home, your stay mindful and fit row. It is the case, I believe, that your prognosis if you get COVID, and aren't we all going to get it eventually, is better if you are fit. And you do a lot of aerobic oh. exercise, so your lungs are strong. Excellent. So do it. And that... Get out there. That... Get the drums. Drummers, stop smoking. It's time. Get off your break. That's the Google change log. What a kettle drum. Now we can talk about the big acquisition from Facebook. It's well, not even an acquisition. Or it's a minority stake. Because they, yeah, they only have 10% of it. 10% for yeah. a lot of money. But for $5.7 billion. Wow. What is this thing that they bought? It's a phone company. It's a phone company. Uh, they bought 10% of a phone company. Which is an right. affiliate of the largest company in India. And nice. the thinking is that they acquired, is it Geo? Is that how you pronounce it? They acquired I'm Geo like because they want to beef up. Well, they didn't acquire it. They got 10%. I'm sorry. They Pardon invested. me. Invested in Geo because of uh, online payments. And right now they are. Kind yes, of they're building WeChat is what they're doing right. for India. That's right. And they are I not mean, a big the, player the sum yet. Up is, they're not a big player yet. So nope. they, they got to do some acquisition. I'm sorry. Uh, investments. Investments. They just say they bought them. As, if you want to. Acquisition acquired a minority stake. They acquired a minority stake. Ten percent is not okay, that much. Okay, fine. Just but it was a lot of money. Worth. It's a freaking lot of money. It's the biggest. Money. It's the biggest uh, cash haul that that, that uh, Facebook. How much did they get Instagram for? One billion. Uh, Instagram was one billion. No, the biggest no, one was WhatsApp. They spent 19, twenty-two billion. Nineteen. 19 20, depending 20, on the stock 20. price, a lot of money right. on yeah. WhatsApp. This is only right. a mere five point seven billion. Five point seven. And to be fair, WhatsApp was their chance to be like WeChat. So, right. <laughs> well, but <laughs> that's a good point, Stacey. Yeah, maybe they're kind of making these. First of all, they got the money, right? Five billion, big deal. And it, it, they need to get these partnerships going so that they can make WhatsApp, which is already popular in India, but they want to make it the full featured payment thing. And there's other companies already in the. So field. I saw speculation today that, that Lyft prices down so far that Google has to buy it tomorrow. Of course, yeah, it's just speculation. I saw that too. But is yeah. is it a point? I mean, there's, there must be some real bottom feeding opportunities now. Oh, yeah. There's, oh, there's tons. I mean, yeah. this is the time when lots of people in the IoT world, we're seeing lots of companies that do um, drone based or remote, uh, not monitoring, but going to view things like analysis and checking into stuff. That is off the charts high because a lot of firms are looking to buy assets. And so they're trying to get a sense of, you know, the quality of those assets because it's time to come in and, you know. I am up. being chided. Chided, I say, by, by the Karsten? chat room. No, by the chat room for having missed so many important change log items. I'll do them real quickly. Fortnite is now on the Play Store. <laughs> Remember, for a while, Epic Games said we're going to sideload this. 
They've given up. They're going to give Google their 30% because it's so important to be on the Play Store. Um, YouTube has debuted a new slate of With Me originals during the coronavirus pandemic. I don't know what With Me is. It's the hashtag With Me campaign. For instance, the creator games presented by Mr. Beast will be a live event with a popular YouTuber. I never heard of him, but okay. Mr. Beast challenges others on the platform to compete in games from their respective homes. Another example, Stay Home with Young Blood, a weekly series that follows a singer-songwriter in a rental apartment where he's quarantined with four friends. Oh, God. Celebrity Substitute is a distance <laughs> learning show which brings in celebrities like Carly Kloss and Ken Jeong to cheat, teach lessons about subjects such as coding and biology. I wonder which of the two Carly Kloss is teaching. There's a lot of these things. We're doing a thing on Friday, I should mention, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to do this. use this new Netflix uh, plug-in for Chrome that lets you watch along. And uh, our hosts and a, a variety of invited hosts will be all we'll all going to be watching the Tiger King together. Oh God! No, we can't. Oh God! We can't play the Tiger King for you. You have to have Netflix. But if you put this plug in, this Chrome plug in on, it will allow you to sync up with our view of Netflix. You'll see us watching, and you can watch along, and we'll all react together. Some of our hosts have never seen Tiger King. I've never seen it, but I can't watch it. Do you want to? You want to join us? Nope. Nope. Come on. I can't. I can't <laughs> handle those. I used to live in a place like this, and oh, okay. I cruelty you, to animals. Is, were you in a I cult? Were you a member of a cult? I was never in a cult. Okay. No. Um, so <laughs> I down, did live in Texas. Does that count? <laughs> yes. Go to NetflixParty.com. Download the Netflix Party plugin. So you will be ready to watch Tiger King with us. You don't actually have to watch it. You could just listen to us going, oh, my God. Mystery Tiger Theater 2020. Yeah. With all of the Twit hosts. All so what do you see? Do you see the Twit hosts? Yeah. But you but you don't see Tiger because we can't play Tiger King. Right. You can't play Tiger King. But you see a, you see see a screen. You'll see watching it. And you can play of it. That plug-in lets you play it in sync. The whole idea is people get together, families get together, watch a movie together, kind of like right. Zooming at the same time. But this extension does it for you. Google Store has refreshed product categories with Pixel, Nest, Stadia, and Pixel Book brands. This is the, uh, the rump Google change log provided by Scooter X in the chat room. Um, at the end, we're going to have to have Jeff just do a little finger drumming. Yeah. Phones are now Pixel. Connected Home is now Nest. Gaming is now... So they put brands on all the categories. You see the difference? Laptops and tablets are now Pixelbook. So they're just putting their brands up there instead of the generic headers. I don't know uh, what that means. No, I wouldn't call this pager. It's... Yeah. I mean, okay, I admit I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Google has added a universal watch list... For movies and TVs to Google search. So, mobile users can first search what to watch to get Google suggestions organized at the top of search results. Uh, and then you can filter it by show. So, here, here's, the, here's what it looks like. It's on your mobile. So, you search for what to watch and then you'll get some suggestions. I don't know if that's any better than any, any other what to watch thing, but okay. Maybe Google's got more information. It'll, it'll propose stuff really good. I feel like there's a lot of these recommendations. I even get it on YouTube TV, so maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's the YouTube TV version. Okay, and now that's the rump Google change log. The rump? Yeah, rump. Am I misusing okay. that term? No, I think you're using it right. Are you rump talking session. about the butt? <laughs> no. If you have a a meeting after a larger meeting, that's called the uh -huh. rump session. A meeting held after the right. So the rump session is. So oh, that was the rump. I have never heard of this. How interesting. It continues oh, after the meeting Jennifer was adjourned. in the chat room says the tail end. Okay. The tail, it's, well, oh, I guess that's why it is the rump, right? That makes sense. But it's the, it's the bit after the bigger bit. 
when the person you don't like leaves, and that. then you get the real business done. So we're going to do from it. now on a rump change log. Just to <laughs> no, it'll never end. <laughs> I thought you were going to wait till I leave and then do a a rump a rump twig or twiz. Um. All right. Well, I want to wrap. Next week will be a rump twig. Why? Because it's after this. I one. won't be here. Oh no! And it's after this one. <laughs> Where the hell are you going? You can't Where go anywhere. Where are you going to go? You can't go anywhere. I I'm I'm getting my Botox shots. So oh good. I could come back with Botox and COVID. By Who the knows? way. She doesn't do this for vanity, ladies and gentlemen. She's just a very tense person. And if I did do it for vanity, that's just fine. Right. But look at her forehead. <laughs> it's seamless anyway. It doesn't matter. She has no lines. Although... Well, right now I have nothing because my, my video is so blurry. Yeah, we can't see anything. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. It's for your uh, migraines. So good. Good luck. I wa I I, uh, I want to now <laughs> do the rump twig which is where we do the stacy's thing jeff's number and leo's tool uh starting with <gasps> stacy's thing stacy's looking around like oh i Stacey don't have a didn't, thing. you don't have to have a thing last week i had two things but let me let me i have a thing you. let me do my thing because it's a thing you would oh, like do your thing yeah one okay, of the because I, I have some one of the engineers at twilio christina sunu She's in the IoT developer community. See, this is right She's up your gonna alley. She's going to be on my show next week. Oh, yes. so my thing is your thing. She no, decided thing, yeah. to build a data tracker for an internet-connected sourdough starter. This is genius. And at Twilio, it turns out, I didn't realize this, they have an IoT developer kit. Uh, and so she used that. It uses Twilio Narrowband, which uses the cell signal. She says, why did I do that? Well... Because your Wi-Fi maybe isn't perfectly reliable. It doesn't use a lot of data. It's not very expensive. You can get a Twilio account fairly. Uh, that's free, I think. And the developer kit. And then you'll need a LiPo battery. You'll need an Arduino. And you'll need the Sour, S-O-U-R-D dot I-O GitHub re repo. <laughs> you also need an MQTT broker of choice, and you have to be, I'm sorry, in the U.S. No sourdough outside of the U.S. allowed. But this is, you know, I mean, honestly, I don't anticipate a lot of people Native doing this, but it's pretty cute because what you want to do with your sourdough, you need to monitor uh, temperature, moisture, and most importantly, size. And this does all of that. The humidity produced as the yeast respirates is delightfully detectable, she says. We can actually, should we look at her monitor? Let's just see if we can see how her sourdough is going. Oh, look at that. The humidity is spiking. T temperature is very consistent. Well done, Christina. Uh, distance, which I guess is how much it's grown, is field chart three. I think her sourdough is, uh, is at a peak, peak performance right now. But the bread monitor, nothing's happening because I guess she doesn't. She's not baking right now. She probably has not made bread yet. <laughs> No, no, she's too busy making sourdough monitors. I think this yes, is this so is exactly what delightful. engineers do when they're stuck at home. They make sourdough bread monitors. I love it. And it's, it's yeah, she's coming on the show next week, not just to talk about this, but to actually talk about how any of us, you know, I know a lot of people who go and buy pies or Arduinos, myself included. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to hook this up right. and do something Never with it. Never do anything. Yeah. And then I'm like, eh. This is incredible. So she's going to help us get over that hump. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool what she and, did. And I imagine it's a, a, 3D, nice looking a 3D printer would help a little bit for the uh, enclosure. It goes right there on top of your sourdough, which, by the way, Christina is looking mighty fine. Mighty fine. Um, there you go. She's planning another bread monitor in the future that connects with SuperSim, which is worldwide. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. I like Twilio. Yeah, they were a sponsor of my show. Oh, love them. I like them a lot. I love them a lot. In fact, I've met some that of their mean, this engineers. Was, this was like a year and a half ago. But, right. you know, no. like, yeah, go nice. Twilio. Nice. Uh, uh, Jeff, do you have okay. a... Uh, well, I could do something boring like telling you that Netflix has almost 16 million new subscribers, double what they expected, so everybody can watch Tiger King with Leo. But instead, <laughs> remember earlier I said we can't say that 
Twitter says this or Twitter says that. Well, according to Fox News, Twitter yes. is going berserk over the discovery, something you can make in your thermal mix, Leo. Yes. White Castle Pate. Um, <laughs> pat what is in White Castle Pate? That is the most disgusting thing. Going through my in grandma's it? church recipe book, 10 White Castle hamburgers, oh. water, and sour cream for topping. Blend burgers in oh. blender which is where you'd do it, or in a thermomix, a few at a time. Adding water is needed for a thick, hard, quotes, dough. <laughs> Spread into lightly greased loaf pan or round mold. Bake at 325 for 45 to 50 minutes. Cool and unmold. Serve with crackers and sour cream. Actually, it's probably delicious. <laughs> I, although, if I'm going to... If I'm gonna do She's any gonna blending, hurl. I'm gonna blend some speculose cookies and make speculose butter. Is that not the best thing you've ever speculose had? Speculose butter is the best quite thing delicious. I actually think speculose had. is a little too sweet. It's it is too sweet. It is, but it's still I have a hard time with it. Delicious. Um, Jeff, I want to vomit now, but <laughs> I found a thing for y'all. Oh I, I always oh, forget oh, stuff like this. Good. But yes. I figured. This is more of a Leo thing, but since Leo did a Stacy thing, I feel I feel okay. Fair about enough. It. Fair enough. Um, um, we all know about Rosetta at home and folding at home. Yeah. Both projects yeah. trying to take proteins and analyze them on behalf of science for COVID nineteen. Yeah. So everybody's like, "Yeah, I'm going to do this now, yay!" Um, but you can only do it on PCs until Belena. They are a container management software for IoT companies. They actually ported this to ARM. So oh. now you can do these jobs on a Pi or not an Arduino. You do need some pretty significant memory. But now you can do it on some of your random, let's say you bought a Pi and you thought you were going to make a sour a sour DO, soured IO thing. Soured but IO. instead you were like, I'll do it later. Right now you could just put it to work doing some folding at home. With your old laptop, get to or I do have a spare Raspberry Pi. Of course you do. There, this is a small <laughs> network right now, only twelve hundred twenty-one computers. Maybe we can add to it. It's foldforcovid.io. Foldforcovid.io. I know somebody who's going to put that to use in another way. Oh yeah, or bring in other people to contribute. Yeah, okay, I won't. I won't so give in his let thing, me but, ask yeah, you because, I mean, I'm. A, I mean, why, why not? Except that. Um, is this really helping anything, uh, this folding at home or Rosetta? Because it is using a lot of power, like a lot. Like, yeah, I know it's the most powerful computer ever, but is it, I mean, is anything coming of this or are we just all just kind of burning candles well, in the they're, darkness? Well, they're assigning jobs and an analysis. So there is a central unit that's assigning no, people to look at various parts. So but if, I mean, the idea is that everybody looks at all this stuff in their spare compute maybe time. Maybe you'll find something. And maybe we'll find something. Okay. Like SETI at home found all those aliens. Well, maybe there are no aliens to find, or oh. maybe they don't want to be found. Okay. So it's, yeah, I'm all right. Would, yeah, would you want to be found by us? No. You want to hide. No. I just, and maybe we don't want to be found. Let's be real. I mean, if it's, <laughs> I don't know that people put this together. It used to be at Stanford, and then some guy took it, and now it's somewhere else, and I, I just I want it to I I want it to be good and useful, but it is using a non-trivial amount of of electricity. So as long as it's good, you so. Uh, my friend who wants to bring this to another arena to get shared computing power and I were talking about this and um, uh, you know I mentioned things like efforts to deal with analyzing genomes of COVID. That need computing power. Cool. Could be useful. Cool. Maybe it's not. I mean, it's just using computer. All it is, is using computing power. It's, it's a, you know, I have seen than a there was a company at CES that used computing power to like heat people's homes while folding. So, so uh, thank you, Karsten. He sent me a subreddit. There's great subreddits uh, on Reddit. And this is one I actually follow called Ask Science. And this was posted oh. eight years ago. But okay. Oh. Okay. You know, folding on homes has been around for 20 years. Is, has folding at home really accomplished anything? And a response, again, eight years ago from a guy who does unequivocally, yes, I do drug discovery, 
One important part is knowing the molecular target, which requires precise knowledge of structural elements of complex proteins. By the way, it's, that's the same kind of thing we have to solve with uh, COVID-19. Some of these are solved by X-ray crystallography, but folding at home has solved several knotty problems for proteins that are not amenable to this approach. Bottom line is we are actively designing drugs based on the solutions of folding at home, and that's just in my particular research. So, and then there's another guy with cancer drug discovery. Uh, he says sometimes you really need sheer computing power, and that's what you get from these giant, you know, clusters of computing. So I'm going to amend my cynical comments and say, yes, it's worth doing. So fold for COVID. Well, there is someone I. actually in the comments talking about what you talked about. Maybe it's not the most efficient way of going about this, but it's the way we have because all of our super efficient supercomputers are already doing other things. They're busy doing other things. <laughs> you know, going They're through. modeling climate change. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. I am going to end the show with a, uh, a fine tweet from Rex Chapman. Uh, quarantined stuntmen. Are you ready for two minutes and 17 minutes of stuntmen who don't have any movies to be in, watch, and enjoy? Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this episode of This Week in Rump Google. <laughs> I thank you for joining me. <laughs> and uh, I encourage you. 17 minutes of this. There's a lot of it. I encourage you to follow Jeff Jarvis on the Twitter and on Medium and at buzzmachine.com. He is, of course, a highly esteemed holder of the Town Knight Chair for Entrepreneurial Journalism at the Town Knight Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism at the Craig Newmark School for Graduate Journalism. <laughs> And there's somewhere and in there. <laughs> somewhere in there is the City University of New York. Thank you, Stacy Higginbotham. Always a pleasure. Giga Stacy on the Twitter, and of course, Stacy on IoT.com is her website. Subscribe to her free uh, newsletter and follow them uh, for the uh, IoT podcast. I'm excited. I'm going to listen to the Twilio. Christina is going to be great uh, next time. She's next the, week. Not next this week, week on the IoT podcast. You can get all that at Stacy on IoT.com. Watch. They're still they're still fighting uh, for. <laughs> <laughs> so the if you aren't watching what we're seeing here is a bunch of stunt people punching the camera and then the next stunt man takes over as if he got punched and then responds what oh he's got to clean his hands first okay very important and then oh, nice. responds back that was nice talking. this is actually really really, really a cute uh, video uh thank you everybody we do this week in google every wednesday around 1 30 pacific 4 30 eastern 20 30 utc you can watch us do it live at twit.tv slash live there's also audio there uh if you want on demand shows go go to the um go to the um website twit.tv all of our shows are there on twit.tv uh this show is twit.tv slash twig we're also on youtube best thing you could possibly do and you would be doing me a favor if you did it. Subscribe in your favorite podcast program. That way you'll get the show automatically every Wednesday when it's done. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Yes. Thank Please you. subscribe. Thank you. You subscribe. Even if you watch it live, subscribe, subscribe. because it's good. It's good. And you want to hear it again. It's the, the This Week in Zeitgeist show. Sorry about the bad theme music. <laughs> Did Jason say he'd do some uh, some yelling? No, I don't know. If I, I think he, I think he needs the boss to tell him to. Okay. That might cost extra. <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. <laughs> thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everybody. Have a great, safe week. We'll see you next time on this yep. week in Google.